DNCC returns to racertv.com here today for round number two of the 2024 season in what is arguably one of the most grueling and most difficult rounds of the year. The sand whoops for three solid hours, the heat, the palmettos, you name it, this track has it. We are coming off a sensational round number one at the Big Buck GNCC where we saw Johnny Gerard nearly flawless, nearly perfect from start to finish grabbing the win. Stu Baylor working up into the number two spot and Grant Baylor rounding out the box in their home state. What a great race it was. Will we see that repeat performance here today or will Craig DeLong return to the podium glory? Jordan Ashburn just off the box. Evan Smith having a career day in the XC1. The list goes on and on. And it all starts right here, right now on racertv.com. Good afternoon and welcome to round number two of the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized, your AMA National Championship. We are here in Palatka, Florida for this, the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC. And Johnny, hey, we talked about it yesterday. Basically, if you're four-wheel racing, you're two-wheel racing, you are in this vicinity of Florida right now. You've got GNCC here in Palatka. you got Supercross in Daytona last night. This is where it's at, Bike Week. Uh, but hey, today... It's all about the GNCC, and we are coming off a great round in round number one. Johnny Girard looking pretty unstoppable. Yeah, that was a, uh, a power statement and a big performance for Johnny. Obviously not his first GNCC win, but uh, wire to wire and just made it look smooth the whole time. Really managed the gap. Did nothing, didn't take a step wrong or place a yeah. wheel wrong all day long. Uh, just commanding performance from top to bottom. Yeah, it, very impressive. We'll see if he can back it up here in the sands of Florida. Uh, let's talk to Stu Baylor and Grant Baylor. Uh, they rounded out that podium. Um, they had their ups and downs, but I think, you know, from a, from a perspective, a, a fan's perspective, uh, Grant stood out to me as the guy. He's always that guy in that third hour that we see really charged. He was there a lot earlier, and the results showed it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but he he kind of went further back than expected. True. Early on in the race, so he he started charging earlier and, and got up. Uh, you know, at one point, I think Grant was either right on the edge of or outside the top twenty. So to come yeah. back to a third, you know, for those that don't really understand at home, I mean, by the end of that three-hour race, that top 20 is spread out yeah. very, very wide. Uh, so he was outside the top 20 on corrected time and just methodically through the first hour kind of like worked himself back up into contention near the tail end of the top 10, then into the top 10, then once we came into hour two and three. He was on a mission, uh, <laughs> consistently clicking off laps faster than the guys in front of him, including his big brother and also Johnny Girard, the leader. Uh, one could argue the point that those guys may be managing things. Um, you know, Stu said after the race, it looked to us that maybe he kind of, I don't want to say gave up on it, but realized, hey, second is where I'm going to yeah. get to today. But it sounds like he charged pretty much the whole time, but did have some struggles along the way, uh, both with lap riders, yep. had some uh, issues with the clutch on his yep. machine. Uh, so he, for, for everything that he went through throughout the day, I think it was a great ride for him and a debut ride for the new team. Hey, it all starts right here today. You've heard from Johnny and I. We talked a little bit about the recap, but now we want to see what these riders are going to face today. So for that, we'll throw it to Jared Bolton with our Yamaha Racing course description. Thanks, guys. It's great to be back here in the Sunshine State. You know, GNCC has been coming to Florida for a long time. You go back to the 80s, had a couple of one-offs not far from here over at uh, Gatorback where they have the Minios. They did one time down in Cocoa Beach, and they went away for a while. And then since 1993, we've been in Florida full-time. Uh, you know, they started out over not far from here over in Ocala, moved down to Okeechobee, way down south for a while, and then kind of skipped around. They were here down the road at the same piece of property, just straight down back behind me here a few miles back in 03, 04. Went away for a while, and then we've been back here since 2015. This makes the Wild Boar our longest-running Florida event, and that's for good reason. It's a little tighter here, a little bit of open here and there, but the old Florida tracks, you get out in the stuff, it's wide open, it's real fast. You know, not, not, not typical GNCC stuff, but when we started coming back here in 2015, it tightened up a lot. It's a lot more woodsy. 
it gets rough. That, that's the thing about the sand. The boy, these whoops, they will absolutely eat you alive. But the smart guys stay on top of them, do the best they can, and it really makes for some great racing. Always some interesting storylines come out of the Florida event just because of how much different this track is than anything else. It's the only real sand race we have of the year. Keeps things interesting. Back to you guys. All right, we're back, and thank you very much, Jared Bolton, for that Yamaha track description. Uh, we've got a lot of racing action coming your way. We're going to let this guy head down and call some 10 seconds, and we'll be right back with more Racer TV action after word from our sponsors. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You got to pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So ah, yee. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. This place is brutal. There's nothing about it, um, nothing else about it. Just tough. Florida has this sand that's, uh, it's just like nothing else, honestly, you've ever ridden, especially right in this area where we're at. Deep sand whoops, it's hot. I mean, I've been staying 10 minutes from here and it, this is the hottest it's been in the last two months. It's always like we come to Florida and get ready for it and it's never that hot in preseason and all that. And then always this weekend, the weather forecast for over 80 every time. This place is brutal, man. It's uh, definitely the most physically demanding race of the year, and uh, it'll beat you down and uh, keep you there if you let it. You want here in Florida it's it's uh, it's looking a little different from the years past I would say between the heat the rough track it's brutal this year it's gonna be rougher and tougher than normal when it's usually wet here the tracks rougher who can go above and beyond not feeling anything except straight pain and still send it this place is tough you can't really get out of it you just gotta smash through it and it, it wears you down and it's it's uh it's, it's almost like a suffer fest, like who, who can, you know, get to that point where it's, where it hurts and just keep going. It is time. The fastest off-road racers in the world fight head-to-head -head in the sands of Florida. And if racing for three hours isn't hard enough already, palmettos, sand whoops, heat, and humidity have been added to the challenge. Who can push the hardest? The demanding suffer battle of the Wild Boar GNCC is coming up next. Let's go racing.
And a good afternoon and welcome to everybody watching at home on racertv.com. We're here in the sands of Florida. And as you guys are tuning in, we are ready to introduce our starting row for the XC1 Pro Class. Riding to the line first, the 969 coming off a big win at the Big Buck GNCC on the FMF Factory Racing KTM, Johnny Gerard. Rolling to the line next, the 514 out of Hodges, South Carolina, aboard the Rocky Mountain Red Bear Kawasaki, Stu Baylor. Rolling to the line next, the 314 out of South Carolina on a Babbitts Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki, the Grizzly Grant Baylor. Roll under the line next, the number three out of Livingston, Tennessee, aboard the Coastal Racing Factory Gas Gas, Jordan Ashburn. And roll into the line next, coming off a career best of the XC1 Pro Class, the 347 out of Jefferson, Georgia, on an active air Max Motorsports back to Husqvarna, Evan Smith. And rolling to the line next, the 2 1 2 out of Duval, Washington, riding aboard the Ampro Yamaha. He's rough, he's rowdy, Ricky Russell. And rolling to the line next, the 7 3 9 out of Morganton, North Carolina, riding aboard the Rockstar Energy Factory Racing Husqvarna. Trevor Bollinger. And rolling to the line next, the number seven out of Australia on a JS Sherco race, a back Sherco, Josh Stray. Rolling to the line next, the 282. Rider out of Traveler's Rest, South Carolina, riding aboard the Phoenix Racing Honda, Mike Wachowski. And rolling to the line next, the 523 at a Boonville, North Carolina, on a Morgantown Power Sports Tele Energy back KTM. Lane Michael. And riding to the line next, looking for a little redemption here today after a rough round number one. Your defending champion, the number one aboard the Rockstar Energy Factory Racing Husqvarna, Craig DeLong. And rolling to the line next, the 178 out of Australia. Aboard the Babbitts Online, Monster Energy Team Green, Kawasaki, Lyndon Snodgrass. And last but certainly not least, the 336 out of Elkin, North Carolina, on a Coastal Racing Factory Gas Gas, Ryder Lafferty. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your starting row for the XC1 Pro Class here at the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC. Skinny enough, barely. Woo! Thank goodness I went on a diet. All right, all right. We are just about ready to do it now. DJ Judd jumps into the Yamaha R Max 1000. And this is where we like to say, DJ Judd, remove the meat. Yeah, just like a Beyond Burger. We take all the meat out of it. Nobody eats those. No one's eating those. They just end up in the clearance aisle at the grocery store. Who are we kidding? Monster Energy Activation Transport makes its way off of the starting line. And as he does in sparkle helmet fashion, all eyes will fixate down into turn number one. where Ricky Towery will take the reins of this race and we go 
as Ricky goes. Round number two, Daytona Bike Week, action packed. If you love two wheel racing, hopefully you were down here. And if not, you're watching at home. And for that, we thank you. Arena Cross, Supercross, GNCC, Ricky Carmichael's Amateur Supercross. You got ATV SX coming up. And now here we go, ladies and gentlemen. About ready to set it off now. One minute. One minute. Until we're ready to go GNCC racing here at the Wild Boar. Can Johnny Girard keep it going here today? Can he go back to back to start the season? Will we see the diversity that we saw in 2023? Seven different winners in seven rounds of racing, eight total, and a round that featured 12 different races. The blue flag waves. Shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, as we are just about ready to roll now here in the sands of Florida. And I got to ask you, Palatka, Florida, Wild Boar, are you ready to go? GNCC Racing! Woo! That's pretty good, but my God, you could have been anywhere in the world and you said, I want to be right here at the Wild Boar GNCC. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you ready to go GNCC Racing? <laughs> 10 seconds for row number one, the XC1 Pro. and they're off. Oh, Craig DeLong, bar to bar. Can he sneak out in front? No, Jordan Ashburn gonna take the whole shot and Johnny Girard goes down. So Girard, slow to get up, maybe a little shaken, and now we'll have his work cut out as he's gonna go, have to go through the entire pack of that XC1 Pro class. As we turn our attention now to the XC2 250 Pro, blue flag waves. Rui Barbosa, Tyler Palmer, Gus Reardon, Cody Barnes, Liam Draper, Josh Toth, Toby Cleveland, ready to roll in 10 seconds. Brody Johnson, Jesse Ansley, Nicholas Cutlass, Justin Con Conquinos, Mac Erlinson, Tyler Medaglia, Landon Lynn, Jason Liscom, Grant Davis, Jonathan Johnson, and Bad Thad Duval. That's going to be the two, one, three of Toby Cleveland grabbing that hole shot and early lead. Shout out to the Steel City Medical Center, FMFX C3 125 Pro Am. Zachary Davidson, Felipe Shane, Sean Myers, 10 seconds. James Churn the third, Dakota DeVore, Sawyer Caratura, Jack Walker, and Dustin Simpson. Oh, Sawyer in the 719 of Jack Walker with a good drive out in front. Little dab right there. Oh, a checkup from the neck up, and it cost him. That's going to go to the 269 of Felipe Chain on that Ray Cliss Canada back KTM. Grabbing a whole shot and early lead there as we turn our attention now to the 250A in 10 seconds. Lane Whitmer, JoJo Cunningham, Ranger Emmons, Jesse Bergman, Thor Powell, Cooper Jones, Bubs, Tasha, Jason Tino, T-Rex, Nick DeFeo, Gavin Simon, Hunter Bush, Will Steven Piper, Ian Potter, David Campbell, who wants it? Oh, 249. That is Gavin Simon. On an Edelman sales back, Husqvarna out of Vermont, grabbing that whole shot. And early lead as we turn our attention now to the open A. 23 riders in total. Dylan T. De La Cruz, 10 seconds. Samuel Evans, Alex Luger, Jeremy Lanther, Justin Brazal, Johnny Fleming, Larry Fortune, Ethan Waddell, Eli Childers, Fernando Davia, Trevor Holen. Here they come. Oh, that one was close, but I think that was the 375. Lane Whitmer was right there. Or Cole Whitmer, rather. Got my Whitners mixed up. Four-stroke A-lights. Ten 
Hayden seconds. Colton Shields, Matthew Davis, Adam Hollenkamp, Hayden Serena, Robert Wise, Rivers Morris, Chase Landers, Ryan Amancio, Ty Ely, Brady Beerbaum, Bailey Flynn, Joshua Connor, Caleb Baltimore, James Jenkins, Brock Bell Soul. Three, six, nine. That's Caleb Baltimore, whole shot machine. And every millennial at home just said, three, six, nine. Dang, she fine. I had to edit it, church it up. It's Sunday. Here we go. Ten seconds. 150A, Landon Hines, Tyler Shields, Tucker Kenry, Rayleigh Messer, Taylor Beckworth, Keaton Noltkamper, Justin Bond, Caleb Lane, Michael Meyer, Lincoln Bischoff, Walker Morris, Ryan Gibbon, Braden Hashman, Colin Anderson, 199. That's a 919 on the helmet. That is Jacob Voland grabbing that whole shot. Here we go. Senior A, 40 plus, ready to roll. Two seconds. Joe Marsh, Frank Messina, Stephen Meacham, Brent Loker, Andy Shea, Joe Potter, Jack Williams, Stephen Tilly, Scott Abel, Joel Grover, Buddy Barnes, Andy Matthew, Jeremy Zajic, Robert Johnson, William O'Brien, Robert Butts, and Bernard Langdon. Five, three, three. That is Andy Matthew on the Husk Varna. Snagging the whole shot and early lead right there. And here we go, Junior A, 25 plus, 10 seconds. Andrew Boggs, Braden Moore, Jeremy Wallstrom, Russell Smith, Jason Key, Jamison McCoyne, Austin Zink, Tyler Braniff, Aaron Higgins, Coleman Benson, Nick Teleskin, Corey Jordan, 177 out front. It's going to be the 651 on the helmet. That is Mario Tonchev. Out of Noblesville, Indiana, with the whole shot and early lead. One rider trying to get her fired back up. That's a 298. Shake it off, baby. You good? Vet A, 30 plus. 10 seconds. Mark Carrasco, Jr., Robbie Norwood, Kevin DePew, Umberto Lopez, Scott Hopper, Rod Leos, Ling Ling Matthew Pratola, Joseph DeBauer, Stephen Estabrook, Jason McKenzie, Cody Greatmatch. Oh, good, smooth, and clean is the 103 of Kevin DePew on that SRT off-road back Husqvarna. Getting it done. 250B, 10 seconds. Devin Moore, Zachary Brazau, Kevin Paquin, Ty Atkinson, Steve Van Lu, Gage Clayton, Brent Rutschnick, Briar Menace. Braxton Black, Colt Noltkamper, Lucas Rubenstein, Robert Webb, Mason DeJarnett. Oh, Ryder goes down the 5.57. It's the 9.10 on the helmet. That's Logan Pellegrini getting it done out in front. Open B class coming up next. Arton Shelley, Chandler Taylor, Nate Garrison, Chris Gates, Hayden Van Curen. Ten seconds. James Munts, Jan Dumaschel. Nathaniel Gibbs, Aaron McAfee, Dylan Fleming, Jesse Fulmer, Caleb Hagan, Carl Theodore, John Pinkman IV, Mark Cole, Tyler Hamrick, Cameron McCoy, Dalton Robbins. That's going to be the 647 of Cameron McCoy out of Petersburg, Illinois. A little pile up right after turn number one. Three riders go down, all back on two wheels and rolling. Four stroke B lights. Drew Hoffman, TJ Brown, Joshua Westgate, Ryan Pitterich, Kevin Gardner, Timothy Narbutt, Jacob McPherson, Meatball, Keenan Rupp. Ten seconds. Jack Algary, Austin Hale, Bryce Woodrum, Wiley Tucker, and Cody Harding. There we go. I think that's Meatball out in front, Jacob McPherson. And it is the 494 of Jacob McPherson on that factory connection and MD performance back Husqvarna with a whole shot and early lead as we turn our attention now to the 150B. 10 seconds. Calvin Matthews, Jarman Lilly, Landon Wentz, Landon Phillips, Dylan Sharp, Gavin Hampton, James Meek, James Simpson, Mason Sakonikas, Nico Prasuti, and David Joseph Jr. The 107, looked like the 6, 6, 7, 4, I think. 
That is James Simpson. Let's get confirmation. Sure enough, that is James Simpson out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Grabbing that whole shot and early lead. And here we go, Senior B, 40 plus. 10 seconds. Larry Hopper, Larson Schultz, Martin Fortier, Brandon Black, Kevin Crister, Miss Leno Batista, Leandro Piera, Luke Snyder, Fernando Pinho, Nathan Welch, Mark Leatherman, Nicholas Pignatello. Oh, Ryder goes down. Whole shot goes to the 6-1-1 of Nathan Welch on that Iron Pin Ranch backed KTM. Couple more rows left here. We got Junior B, 25 plus. Adam Machinsky, Devin Hall, Douglas Randolph, Zachary Gerhard, ready to roll. 10 seconds. Joseph Werner, Ian Cimaroli, and Billy Saliga. Look at the drive by the four, one, three. Into turn number one, around the corner. Smooth operator, four, one, three. That is Devin Hall out of Huntington, West by God, Virginia, on that Maynard Racing performance back ride with the whole shot. Vet B, 30 plus, 10 seconds. John Bottomy, James Margetti, Michael Jurosco, Spencer St. John, Jean Philip Churgeon, Robert Martinez, Corey King, Brandon Doris, Thor Church, Jose Mundez, Luis Colado, Ryan Tucker, Juan Lozada, Joshua Winkler. Oh, it's going to be tight. No, it's not. 607, no question. Juan Lozada out of Miami, Florida, grabbing that whole shot and early lead. And we got one rider back there. And I think he's pushing her. Pushing her back to the pits. Okay. All right. We are safe to move about the country now on the start line. That's going to wrap things up for us here for a moment. We're going to take a short break, get in a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back with more from the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC. take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep. Tough day at work. Nice cruiser sort you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So. Ah, yee. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. It's a big world out there. How do you choose to see it? When you crave the long canyons, rocky trails, rutted tracks, and lonely highways, they become a part of you. Podiums and personal records, we choose it all. Because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. You just need to ride where you belong.
whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles so you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You could save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Sands of Palatka, Florida, for round number two of the Progressive Grand National Cross Country Series for 2024. My name is Jackson Bro, and I'm alongside Zach Heron to bring you today's action. Johnny G and Mikey will be joining us in the studio soon, but for now, stay tuned as Zach takes us through the start recap. Yeah, thanks, Jackson. It was the same story, a little less wheels today. Great racing from the drop of the green flag this morning, both in the youth race and, of course, in our AM race as well. But now it is time for three hours of suffering. That's a word we're going to hear a lot of today. And let's see how the suffering started, if you will, with the Specialized Start Recap. Kicking it off with that XC1 Open Pro. Now, all the way to your viewer's left-hand side, you're going to see Craig DeLong almost making a little contact there with Jordan Ashburn, but he goes wide. Stu Baylor going to say thank you very much, try to sneak up the inside of him, but it is going to be the number three of Jordan Ashburn hanging on, grabbing the whole shot in XC1. Stu Baylor sitting in second. Looks like the long going to hang on for third. I take that back. Ricky Russell going to slingshot around the outside. And look, he's trying to get a two-for-one deal. Look at this chaos. I love it when we have this much time before they drop into the woods. You see how much positions are changing within the first few straightaways out there. But it is going to be Jordan Ashburn grabbing the whole shot. Now we drop to the XC2 class. And a guy who got plenty of whole shots last year in our XC3 125 class is Toby Cleveland. Switching the two-stroke up for the four-stroke. And he is trying to do more of the same as he grabs the whole shot in your XC2 class. I saw him doing practice starts yesterday. I said, how many do you do? He says, until it feels right. So... Whatever he got uh, figured out yesterday, it seems to be working. I believe that is the 922 there in second place and possibly Cody Barnes on the Phoenix Racing Honda in third as they dip off into the woods. Now we take a look at your FMF XC3 125 Pro-Am class, and it is the Orange Rider. We're still trying to get a name on this so they can get a proper uh, shout-out for grabbing the whole shot because they did. They hit that first turn absolutely perfectly, fighting tooth and nail. There's Dustin Simpson trying to run it up the inside. Dirt bike Jesus, if you will. And Dustin's not giving up. He's feeling froggy after a podium at round one. He's uh, one of the older riders here in this XC3 class. But look at that. With age comes wisdom. And there is Dirt Bike Jesus himself. Dustin Simpson sneaking around. They're going to lead your XC3 class as they head off into the woods. That was your specialized start recap. Now, uh, we welcome Johnny G into the truck with us as well. We take a look at round one results. It was Johnny Gerard grabbing a win at round one. But what we didn't see was Johnny Gerard went down in turn one. He has made things difficult for himself today. Yeah, actually, Johnny Girard, uh obviously laying on the ground there, exiting turn one, uh, was very last into the woods, not far behind, didn't look like it was a hard crash, kind of just looked like his handlebars or maybe fork lug got hung up on Ricky Russell's bike as they were tooth and nail kind of battling there in the first turn. Uh, also worth noting in the XC2 class, both uh, Angus Riordan and Liam Draper starting much further back today. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, your, your, your winner at, at round one in XC2 and your first and second place riders in XC, or sorry, XC1 and then uh, first and second in XC2 kind of start near the rear of the pack honestly on a day like today i don't feel the start nearly as important as it is at some races i think we're going to see a lot of uh biding their time early in the race here um don't think we're going to see anybody go out and just sprint try and run away obviously if the opportunity presents itself but uh it's a long day there's a lot of obstacles out there and uh we'll talk about this track back here here zach and man uh that rain really kind of brought things to a whole new level the track has really gone away uh the track crew's done a great job going out there cutting in some new sections fixing up some of the old sections but we've seen it in every race this weekend the track is the biggest factor adaptation has been the word we've heard all the way around and i'm talking to everybody from the riders to the teams to just like you said johnny the track crew having to go out there and figure some things out deteriorating so quickly at some point they're having to reroute throughout the day how much do you think the race line itself is now we see your leaders on screen is going to change throughout the next three hours yeah jordan ashburn leading the way here i, I think this track is going to change more than any other uh just in its makeup obviously J look at that shout out to the 282 of mike wikowski sitting there in second uh one of his i believe this would be his third official race in xc1 uh right up there and, and putting pressure on jordan ashburn looks like that Ryder lafferty Ryder lafferty i believe it is there in third 
and then uh, possibly Craig DeLong in fourth or Trevor Bollinger. It is one of the Huskies. Oh, wait, that's a little further back. Uh, so this is back out front watching that bet. Wow, these guys are uh, pretty far along here. They're headed back into that bike-only section. and looks like uh, Ricky Russell trying to make the pass on, is that Ryder? He's that Aaron. might be Wachowski. I know he's in the black gear today. Yep, it looks like uh, Ryder's made the pass. Oh, look at this. Ricky Russell up the inside and gets a twofer. That was a great line right there. You know he scoped that out when he was pedaling, and that's how quickly you can make moves here if uh, if you got the lines picked out. Looking like he's getting froggy. Going to try and uh, wrestle the lead away here, and he's got it. Just that fast, fourth to first. Ricky Russell has got the lines dialed in right now, but Jordan Ashburn firing back, trying to go around the outside, not getting it done. Still Ricky leading the way. Absolutely. Ricky willing to take the risk out there in those mud puddles. That's what we've heard all weekend long. Some sections, they're only a couple inches deep. You go a little too far left or right, and you may be going way deeper than you expect. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I said I don't think we're going to see anybody really uh, try to run away here, but Ricky Russell is must have heard me say that and say, well, Johnny doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm going to show these guys. Not only has he gotten to the front, but he is going significantly faster than those guys were going to this point. What this is going to do is it's going to start to spread things out. Looking like Jordan Ashburn has said, no, I don't think I'm going to let Ricky go. We know this is a guy that can win races. It's not just some flash in the pan that, oh, this guy's not going to last. Ricky does obviously have the steam, so Jordan's going after him and uh, going to reel him back in. Now, uh, Ryder Lafferty, another one with success here in Florida, being able to do it in the XC2 class last year. How much confidence do you think he's bringing on the property? Sure. I mean, I think any time you come to a property where you've had success, you've got that little bit extra swagger. Uh, plus, obviously, Ryder training at Ranch Russell, which is just four miles down the road here. Uh, conditions very similar. You know, same same kind of soil, same trees. It, it You know, when you're here, you feel like you're just at a little bit extension of the ranch. So he's been down here since December. So it's obviously a familiar environment for him. I, I think if uh, he's looking for a shot in the arm and a little bit of confidence, today could be the day he could get it done. Absolutely. Now, I'm curious. Uh, I wasn't able to see where Stu Baylor fell back to. He was inside that top three, but then he kind of got clipped coming out of that second or third turn and wasn't able to see where he got shuffled back to, but uh, not exactly how Stu was wanting to kick off things in Florida. No, and we're pretty far into the course here, too, and there's a lot of soft spots, so it's, it's very easy to pick a line and not necessarily get stuck, but just get bogged down a little bit. You can lose three, four, five spots uh, just simply by picking not the best line, and you can also gain three, as we saw Ricky Russell do there in a matter of, what, 200 yards? Absolutely, and I think a lot of that was just willing to go where the other riders is. And I, like you always say, jo uh, Johnny, you can't pass a rider if they're directly in front of you. Right? You can't go through them. Yeah, it's very true. And, and Ricky's a rider that really goes out and studies the track, spends a lot of time out there on, on Saturday. And uh, it looked like the other guys were just content to follow. Like, hey, if this guy makes it through the water, I know I can too. Ricky was confident in those lines he was choosing. Like, hey, that line may be good, but I know this one is as well. He spends a lot of time out there. I think we actually had an opportunity to speak with Ricky uh, before the race today. And kind of get his words on what he was thinking coming into Florida and where he saw the season going. Yeah, it's different. Last year was good. I mean, I yeah, it's different. It's usually, of course, it's always like we come to Florida and get ready for it, and it's never that hot in preseason and all that, and then always this weekend, the weather forecast for over 80 every time, and it's just this weekend, so no one really is ready for the heat, but uh, Right now it's overcast and kind of drizzling, so it's kind of, hopefully it's supposed to do that kind of tomorrow too, so we'll see. It might not be a scorcher, it might be just a little more high high speed, because um, everyone's pushing a little harder, and um, it might get rough though, because it's, it's kind of wet, so the wet will kind of make the sand loops even deeper and, and more rough, more choppy. So there you go, you just heard it from the man himself, and, and like he, he touched on, we've had some different weather throughout the weekend I, I just pulled up the radar while he was saying that there is a small chance of light rain in the next couple of hours so we're, it could be it could be looking totally different by the time this thing is all said and done well you know and it's worth mentioning Zach that uh, the weather that we've had the last couple days aren't isn't really what's affecting the track right now it's actually the water table here in Florida you know we're just a few feet above sea level so when you've had a lot of uh, accumulated rain over a period of time you actually, the water table will raise, meaning rise, meaning that the water is closer to the surface. So some years we're down here and the sand is just powdery and dry. And right now you can see, yes, this section is, is typically has some water. All the water holes are bigger. And e anywhere on this property, you could dig down literally just a few inches and you're in water. So when you get dirt bikes and ATVs turning it up, you're pulling moisture up out of the ground. And that was the first thing the track crew said when they got here last week. This is the wettest we've ever seen it. So it's this isn't as much a function of 
the rain that we had yesterday um, or even the rain that we had last night. This is more just the water table being high and the water coming up out of the ground as these guys are racing. And it makes very, very soft conditions. It makes uh, it makes these big deep holes. And uh, Jackson, you know, you've been out there checking out. We've seen, I mean, youth riders buried up to their, their handlebars. Yesterday we saw the ATVs stuck. One of the keys you've been out there kind of looking is is just picking the light, right lines and, and, and trying to keep yourself out of harm's way. Yeah, Johnny, it is absolutely brutal out there. I got the chance to catch up with the WXC, and they were saying they didn't really think you could override this track. They said, you know, normally in the sand it's about not overriding it, but Gudish was saying she didn't think you could really override it the way it is today. It is so rough. We saw some of the 250 bikes coming through the two-strokes it was over their head or the ruts were. Yeah. So you you can only imagine how it is actually out there on the course, over 500 bikes in our AM race. And that's another factor as well. I mean, Florida, not typically one of our more attended rounds in terms of uh, participants. It's, you know, it's obviously a far, far travel for a lot of the riders from up north, but all weekend long, the starting lines have just been packed, starting with the micro races early yesterday morning, all the way through the ATV races, you know, this morning's youth races, the Stasic races. It's like everybody decided... You know, Florida, we're going this year. Sometimes we skip this one, and, and that's, I think, attributing also to the track just getting a little bit extra beat up. But one other thing that Ricky was saying there about when the sand gets moist, how it gets rougher in a way, when the sand is powdery, it kind of just almost flows, like, with the wind and, and gets pushed around. When it has moisture to it, it's more of what you call sandcastle sand. If you ever try to build a sandcastle on the beach, you know you can't grab powder sand and turn it into a sandcastle. When it's got some moisture, you can pack it all together. Oh, look at that, Jackson. Looks like we got a new leader there. Or a new old leader. That's a new new leader, I think. Is no, that Lafferty or is that Ashburn? No, that's that Ashburn. Is Ashburn. Yep, you're right. Ashburn so back where? up front. Where did Ricky Ru Ricky Russell went right there? Did you see that? Ricky Russell is way over here. And there's Johnny Gerrard, I believe, yeah. making his way back up. Yeah, so that was a completely different line. Gerrard making the pass on Wachowski and looking like he's got a run on Ryder Lafferty now as well. Gerrard kind of coming out of nowhere, picking through. And this is where we saw, I believe this is possibly up headed towards no I thought this might be towards the finish line there was a section earlier where we saw several riders it was the the, the line everybody was avoiding early in the race but by the end of it all your top riders had to cut over because the other line had gotten beat down so much so this jumps into what is really the only section of Palmetto's left big section of Palmetto's left on the property here um, so this is actually across that little access road up there. And uh, this is, it is working its way back towards the pro pits, but they still have all that open stuff out towards the front uh, with the standing water. There is Lafferty there with the black camel back. Ahead of him, it is Jordan Ashburn, still Ricky Russell up there as well. And now the 969, last round's winner on the charge, on the ground in turn one, already up to fourth and starting to put pressure on the 336 of Lafferty. Oh, Lafferty taking a look over his shoulder. Says, hey, that bike behind me is pretty loud. Who's who's in a hurry? Looks back and sees his good buddy and training partner, Johnny Gerrard. And Johnny's got a run coming up the right-hand side. Looking like he's going to try and drag race him down. And Ryder Lafferty's going to let him have it. Johnny Gerrard now up to the third-place spot. A little look over there from Lafferty. He could definitely hear somebody is wide open coming into this corner. Standing it up on the back wheel. We saw a lot of the top riders yesterday, Walker Fowler and Bryson Neal, it seemed like actively avoiding creating a big splash going through the waters. Guess these guys didn't get the memo. Well, let me explain something to you. When you splash through water on an ATV, you get yourself wet. When you splash through water on a dirt bike, you get everybody else wet. The water kind of splits, like, you know, almost like the bow wave off of a boat on a dirt bike. On an ATV, it goes straight up in the air, comes down, ruins your goggles, your gloves, everything. That's why we see the ATV guys going so much slower. Unless you can wheelie all the way through it, keep your front end up out of it, if your front end's going to drop any time in that water on an ATV, you have no choice but to let off. But these guys, you know, they can charge right through the water without getting themselves, uh, you know, hurting their goggles, hurting their gloves. Look at this. John oh, that's a risky little line there from Johnny Gerard. That one didn't pay off. Maybe he didn't quite walk that one or it got chewed out a little bit in the morning race. Makes it through no problems, but now he's got some wet feet. Stu Baylor getting held up there in that puddle as well, trying to go to the inside. Checking in as they get ready to head through pit lane. There is Ricky Russell. Looked like he was reaching down, grabbing the hydration. Is that Ashburn? There's Stu. Oh, no, there's Baylor. There's, there's Gerard. There's Lafferty. I'm Wachowski. Trying to take a look at how the rest of the XC1 class is shaping up. There is Trevor Bollinger. And it just goes to show how different 
this the uh, the conditions are right here. It's uh, not near as thick. Riders kind of sliding their way through. I believe that might have been Snodgrass. There is Josh Strang. Grant Baylor. Yep. I think it was Lane Michael. And uh, look, then we start dropping into the EXC2 class. Yeah, was that the 922 of Grant Davis? Already? I believe so, yeah. So that would have been, I believe, your leader in XC2 unless we missed somebody there. A lot of people expecting big things out of him. On screen, that is your leader out front. The 212 and Pro Yamaha, Ricky Russell, chased by the coastal gas gas of Jordan Ashburn there on the number three machine. And you can see how chewed up this track is already after a whole weekend of racing action, Zach. These guys, you know, these are the cream of the crop, but they're getting the track that is the most used up. And they're, they're paying the price for all the fun everybody else had all weekend at this point. I'm telling you what, Johnny, it is kind of mind-blowing. I was fortunate enough to walk around earlier during the AM race. We had, of course, our women's pro class out there as well as Caleb Russell. And, I mean, the difference between the way Caleb goes through a section, you're thinking, oh, yeah, that looks pretty bad, but he didn't make it. it. He didn't look too hard for him. But then you see the rest of the field come through. They are off the side of the motorcycles. They're getting stuck so bad they're having to have other people help them pick it up. It is insanely difficult out there right now. Yeah, the ruts are deep. The line choice are so our Stu Baylor getting a run he's now up up they're all getting through there so it looked like for a moment there it looked like Ricky Russell lost his momentum maybe he was stuck but he was just kind of checking up to take an inside line there so it is still Russell Ashburn Baylor your top three and here they are from a ground camera at the 12 mile marker Ricky Russell there is Jordan Ashburn and there is Stu Baylor a little different line there is Johnny Girard so those are your top four and then it should be the 282 of Wikowski and no it's Ryder Lafferty uh, there and then Kowski. It looks like Bollinger trying to sink a, sink a line into the back of that freight train, see if he can keep up. That's that's the hard part at this point in the race, Zach. You know, you don't, oh, look at this. Baylor's got a line. He's caught the throttle, and he makes his way around Ashburn, taking over that number two spot, at least momentarily. But these lines don't look like they come together quite yet. Looks like he's now starting to make some ground on the leader, Ricky Russell. He might go from third to first in this section, but now... See, that's how that works out. A line's faster until it isn't. Johnny Gerard, whoa, what happened there? Problems for Gerard came to a complete stop. There you go. Almost looked like he was confused on where he wanted to go. Yeah, that was, he, yeah, he lost a couple seconds there. He wasn't quite certain which line he wanted to go into. This is the section I was talking about headed towards the finish line where it is just absolutely brutal. Riders were clipping the fence. They were going so close to it, just looking for some clear territory. Oh, Stu Baylor. Almost was able to put a wheel in on Ricky there settling into the number two spot. I wouldn't say settling, looking like he's pretty racy and he wants a round. I think we're gonna see these two uh, really duke it out here. Neither of them seeming to want to give up the point position. And you saw Ricky Russell take a little glance back as they were leaving the scoring area. Who exactly is this behind me all of a sudden? And what do you think that, that does? When a rider takes a look back, if a rider sees somebody like Stu Baylor versus he turns around and sees Craig DeLong, how does that affect Ricky Russell, you think? Oh, I think for a guy like Ricky, I don't think it affects him which of those two guys it would be, uh, you know, because either of those two are contenders. He knows he's going to have to race those guys most likely at some point today. Uh, I think the, some kind of the things that confuse you sometimes is you see a guy pushing on you that you wouldn't expect to be battling with. Uh, that's when you're kind of like, whoa, maybe my pace isn't isn't what I thought it was. But Ricky being out front, seeing Stu behind him pushing, not a huge surprise there. I mean, Stu's known to, to lay down some speed, obviously. But uh, Ricky's always so fast early in these races. Seems like he's a guy we talk about leading so often, leads so many laps these last couple of years. And uh, getting great starts here as of late on that Ampro Yamaha and getting himself up front, putting himself in position to do exactly this. And uh, Stu Baylor on that Red Bear Kawasaki not wanting to sit behind Ricky. He's trying everything. He's next to him. He's inside him. He's outside him. He's taking different lines. And uh, he is not content to follow. He wants the lead. Yeah, clearly Stu putting a push on right now, trying to mount an attack and gain this lead. Question is, how long is he going to keep doing that? Obviously, when you start closing in like that, you're just getting absolutely peppered with sand. Yeah, I'm surprised to see him trying for as long as he is in these sections. But we're you see, you look at the ground, that's kind of that white sand. It's not so bad when you're getting roosted by the sand. It doesn't really stick to you. It just kind of falls off. When you get into the heavier black soot uh, and those water sections, I, I can't imagine if he is still behind Ricky, he's not going to drop back a little bit. Unless he has a line picked out and knows he has an opportunity to make a pass, you're not going to just sit there and eat that roost. It's going to be interesting to watch. Great shot here from our Yamaha Racing live drone. As we watch them weave their way through this Florida property trying to see looks like Stu is doing a lot of almost line testing if you will kind of dipping off this way 
Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And I guess that is that's something that he's able to do, right? As he's following right there, he's in a perfect opportunity to try this, try that. They, they tend to call that a catbird seat. Yeah, I don't know what it means, but it it, uh, it basically offers him the opportunity. As of right now, he has no pressure from behind him. We do see third place back there, but not right on his rear wheel. So he's got Ricky well within his sights. He can take, like you said, those alternate lines and see, is this one faster? Is it slower? He has no immediate pressure behind. That is Jordan Ashburn there and then Johnny Gerrard. So that's third and fourth as they run one mile marker in a number two lap. So we're uh, just getting started in this one, and it's going to be a long day of racing. But the action is already fast and furious. And back to the drone shot, it's still Stu Baylor putting the pressure on Ricky Russell. And uh, looking like he really, really wants to get to lead. And I'm almost thinking now, I, I don't think he's just going to want to get to lead and set the pace. I think he wants to get to lead and try to run away, which if he's feeling that strong, that's a huge statement here in Florida. Now, one of the other things we've heard a lot of from the podium finishers today is lap traffic has been particularly brutal. Just because you can't really predict which way they're going to go, they get stuck in these mud holes or something like that. You think they're going to try to pull off to the left-hand side. Uh, we heard one story earlier today, a leader guy just completely turned the bike into him. So we're taking a look back here at mile one. Going to show, looks like that, is that the 922? Couldn't quite, did you see a number on that one, Johnny? I did, I did not. A little, a lot of black sand stuck to the front. Absolutely, they're all starting to blend in together. That's Josh Toth. That was the 206 machine. So we are into the XC2 class now. Uh, and look at this. Strang. That is Josh Strang. So Toth already up through, running up pretty high there. That was one of the. I believe that was Lane Michael. Yeah, and then possibly. May have been Toby Cleveland, could have been the other rider that we weren't sure who it was. Well, now it's uh, it's anybody's guess as we've got one lap in the books. We're going to get a quick word from our sponsors and we'll be back. It is Ricky Russell leading. Last time we checked, but Stu Baylor's breathing down his neck. We'll be back here in just a few from the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC. Reliability and premium quality with Kenda Tires. Delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles. Automotive, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, bicycles, trailers, lawn and garden, and even golf. Trust Kenda Tires to guide you on your next adventure. Kenda, designed for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Cometic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Cometic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Cometic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Cometic. Cometic Gaskets, sealing championships since 1989. I'm seven-time GNCC champion Walker Fowler, and I run GBC. Second. Like a bullet into the first turn, the number one with the pink helmet and pink bars. It is Walker Fowler, the seventh. I'm Devin Peehan, and I run GBC. I'm Josh Merritt, and I run GBC. I'm Chris Borch, and I run, and I run, I run GBC.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC round number two of the 2024 Progressive GNCC Series. Hey, we kick things off with a bang there at round number one, and how lucky are we to have two brothers that are able to make an XC1 Pro podium, and we were actually able to catch up with both of the Baylor boys and hear what they had to say about doing just that. To have my brother on the box with me, it's really cool. Like, I, obviously, it's happened before at, at a lot of national enduros. We've gone one too many a days. But um, with the GNCCs, the only time that it's happened was during COVID. So we didn't physically get this stuff on the podium together. So being on the same color bikes this year, uh, being both monster athletes and, and being on the podium at round one is, is, is pretty pretty cool. Uh, I think for, for most people, and, and, and I understand you can look at the Lawrences, but those guys haven't competed. Those guys don't both have world championships. Those guys both aren't multi-time national champions at the top rank. Phenomenal riders, TVs on them, absolutely great guys. Um, but when it comes to brothers in racing, I don't think that there's been a, a duo that's been as competitive at the top for as many years as my brother and I. I think with eight of the last 10 national championships in national enduro, um, over 50 wins in the last decade there, uh, over 20 wins here in the GNCCs and multiple top fives, XE2 championships. So to top it off and actually get to stand on the podium with him was, was really cool. Yeah, the first time, I mean, that's crazy, crazy to say it, but first time it's ever happened, uh, you'd, you'd think it would have happened more than it has. But uh, first time we've actually got to get on the podium together at a GNCC, the last time we did it was 2020, right when the COVID started going down. and. Uh, they had podium restrictions and all that so yeah we didn't get to share the podium even though I think he won that race and I got third um, yeah it was cool though this time to actually get up there and, and be on the box with my brother um, seems like a long time coming for sure because uh, you know we've obviously both got plenty of podiums and and he's got plenty of wins I've got three wins in this series so uh, yeah I mean you would have you thought it would happen years ago but no, it was, it was cool to do that and uh, to do it right in front of the hometown crowd, too. Uh, had a lot of friends and family out there watching that don't get to make it out to all the rest of the races. So um, to do it to do it there was pretty special. Well, the Baylor bookends, if you will, Johnny Gallagher. Uh, we're getting word. It sounds like uh, Craig DeLong, the three, well, excuse me, the number one machine. And there it is. A live look. Oh, Johnny, yeah. that is a gnarly crash. We're melted. Yeah, uh, uh, what's well, the, we got the, Zach Heron heading down there to get the scoop, but um, first and foremost, I hope Craig's okay. Yeah, that's a wild deal. That's uh, fire damage. I, yeah, we don't want to speculate. We'll 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 let. Uh, yeah, not not good. Uh, Craig, uh, we're told did come back. It looked sounded like he was on the back of an ATV, uh, but that machine you could see the rear fender bent down into the rear tire, uh, and what obviously looks like melted. Um, plastic. Uh, we, we'll, we'll get the word from from the uh, the team once those get and, and most importantly find out if Craig is okay. It's okay, yeah. What, what the situation is on him physically, uh, but looking like at this point we can confidently say he is done for yep. today uh, here at the Wild Boar GNCC, and that's not the start you're, you're looking no. for if you're, you're trying to defend that championship. Obviously a heartbreaker at round one, and looking like uh, a no points day today, so he's going to be in a pretty good size hole and and. Uh, We'll just wait to hear and, and yeah, see what we can yeah. get for updates. That That's one of those, you look at it, you, you kind of cringe, and, and at that point you're like, throw the points out the window, let's yeah. hope the guy's all right. Yeah, oh, no, I Absolutely. mean, for, you know. first and foremost, but yeah. we, we, just so we're not, we, Absolutely. We, our, our producer did say they saw Craig was riding Correct. on the back yeah. of the ATV, so we, we've we been told it's not that he's yep. out there, you know, injured somewhere. We, sure. we were told he's in the pits, we didn't get a shot of him, but they were telling us we were getting, during that uh, interview with the Baylor brothers, that uh, Craig was riding on the back of that ATV. Doesn't mean he couldn't be you know, slightly injured, but he was, he is mobile, so we'll get the update as we can. Uh, we're waiting on the leaders here from our Yamaha Racing Live drone. Uh, back to that Baylor Brothers interview. You know, Mikey, those guys really are uh, GNCC to the core. I mean, these are riders that have started all the way from our very, very small, you know, youth divisions, yeah. youth champions, uh, both former XC2 champions, A-class champions. They've worked their way up through, and for them to share that podium, again, they have both earned podium positions, but as he, as Grant alluded to in that interview, the first time they actually stood there together yeah. on the podium uh, was, oh, there we see, Craig. That is not an injured guy. That is a <laughs> no, dejected guy. So, that is. Frustrated. Uh, I don't know 
what we'll get as far as yeah. word on this, uh, but we'll get what we can get, and we'll pass it along when we get it. Yeah, that's. Uh, but hey, good, good to see him sitting, chilling. Yep. And obviously very frustrated, yep. but and and good, it's good for us to have that shot. Fans for at sure. home, you know, if Craig's got family members, friends, yep. anybody watching at home, uh, Craig's bike looks a lot worse for the wear. Sure. Craig himself uh, just is okay. So Man. that's that's a bad day, but it could be worse. So we'll. Uh, We'll get a word with him or with someone from the team when we can and uh, update you guys as we find out that information. Wild stuff. Crazy, crazy. Six miles in. We wait and we watch here at the <laughs> FMF PowerPoint. Man, a lot happening. There's uh, a, If you look at that sky, I was in there prior to walking in here, and, and Dan uh, Reinhardt was looking at the forecast. And oh, don't talk about no it. No rain is possible, but it is moving, like, north of us. And if you look out there, you can probably see the black skies. It's like, yeah. okay, just keep moving north. That's south, um, just so you know. That's, oh, what? Well, excuse me, yes. Uh, but no, regardless, there you go. How, yeah. how about that look? Yeah. So there's the storm moving past us. And it didn't look like much, even if it comes. Uh, it could cool things down a little. It's, it's starting to yeah. warm up a bit. We're in a nice dry trailer, so yes, yeah. let whatever happen, happen. That's it. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm a mud guy. Some guys are, are asking for it. We, yeah. You heard it on the podium yesterday. Yeah, they're making me angry. Yeah, you were upset about it. They want to they mutter in Georgia. No, thank you. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we've got this beautiful shot here from the Yamaha Racing Live drone, and now we've got some racing action on screen. That second machine appeared to be Johnny Girard. The first one is, is that Stu? Stu. It is. Stu is, uh, well, what didn't start as a black bike in black gear, but it certainly is now. And, man, watching him prior to that commercial break, riding like a wild man, wanted that lead, wanted to be out front leading this and that's where he's finding himself now so there's your top four in that shot and it was Stu Baylor leading the way it was in second place Johnny Girard third was Ricky Russell and fourth was Jordan Ashburn so they've swapped positions around a little bit but your top four are still your top four and it looks like they're starting to pull at least a little bit of gap on everybody behind them so the pace that Stu's putting down proving to be uh, you know faster than expected I think at this point yeah. in the race at least from what we're seeing from the drone and the camera shots it looks like uh, really pushing the pace I would have thought that uh, we would have seen kind of more wait and see early but you know your number one and two guys from two weeks ago are now number two and number one so anytime you get the, the fast guys up front it's going to push the pace especially when a race like this you've, you've heard a lot of guys talk about how when you get to this race it's so physically demanding you don't want to be racing 10 people late in the sure. race so you want to thin it out but typically we don't see it on lap one it's yeah. usually like a lap or two in the books and then somebody will go so but Stewart had made a comment and i think it was even on camera about you know hey i won this race by over two minutes once and that's what i'm coming down here to do again um so maybe that's what he's trying to prove right now <laughs> he's, he's certainly on his way and i gotta think down here in, in florida you know, these guys, they talk about eating roosts all the time. In Florida, Johnny, you've raced this many times. It's got to be like getting sandblasted, literally. Like you're sandblasting your parts. No, this is you're getting sandblasted on the track. Is it, is it that painful? Well, here's the thing. The, the actual sand flying at you isn't all that painful. Uh, I won't go into a whole lot of details, but when you get Where it sand goes, in places. There we yeah, go. Sure, whether it be inside <laughs> your jersey, yeah. you know, inside your helmet, you know, then it's it's abrasive on your skin. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they say it's great for exfoliating, so I always felt very exfoliated <laughs> very. Uh, when I I left here in Florida, and then when you mix moisture in, it uh, becomes almost like a, uh, yeah, nightmare. A, a, it becomes a bad situation. Yeah. So you're you're definitely rubbed raw mm. um, anywhere that you contact anything after a race like this. When you get all that sand, whether it be from sweat or the moisture from the track, but the key is to get up front. And yep. the only way to get up front is to kind of get out there, mix it up like we saw Stu do. And uh, he's right now he's not eating any sand. It's all going no. behind him, and Johnny Gerrard is the one having to eat it. It's always a flex to me. You see it like in the NFL when you have an outdoor game in like Florida and the team wears the black jersey. It's yeah. kind of that, what's up? Yeah. Heat doesn't bother me. Yeah. I feel like there's some of that mind game going on. Oh, look state. at this. It looks like Ricky Russell has now dropped back to fourth. Jordan Ashburn has gotten around. Uh, so that is flip-flop. The last camera shot, it was Ricky in third and Jordan in fourth. And those two looking like they're going to need to kind of make it push here. They do not want to let the lead duo get away. Uh, they don't. If they don't move quickly, that five-second yeah. gap becomes 20, 20 becomes 30, and next thing you know, they're gone. And then we have what we had yesterday, which is a six-minute gap between second and third. Let's not have that today. Six minutes and nine seconds. I'm yeah. still reeling over yeah, same. that one. That was uh, a wild, wild race. Those two up front just absolutely pushed the pace. And, you know, going back, I mean, we could see a similar thing today. We've yeah. got two guys that we know are capable of that kind of speed, that kind of endurance up front one and two. I do believe the guys behind them have the stuff to run with them, but if you lose them, it makes it so much harder to try to 
know the pace. You don't know the pace if you can't see the pace. Yeah. And you can get all the pit boards in the world, and you can think you're doing everything right. And when you look and you think you're gaining time, next thing you know, you look and you've lost 30 seconds. And it, it sometimes it just becomes frustrating. Yeah, that's that is you see it, see it in these guys. We'll wait and we'll watch here from our Yamaha Racing Live drone. We're out to wait. Looks like some of our XC2 riders now working their way through at the seven mile marker. Uh, that was one of the Landers Racing KTM machines. Not sure which didn't catch a number. Could have been Angus Riordan, our round one winner. Could have been our early leader from today here, the 922 of Grant Davis. Uh, we will know when they all, you know, work their way through and check in to complete two laps. But uh, we can go back and take a look at what things were when they completed the first lap of racing, if we can get this uh, scoring up and going. You, Mikey's got the magic password, so I'm going to swap positions with him. He's going to go over there, get that all dialed in. All right, we're back here at the Monster Mile, mile number seven. We see a couple of the Sherco guys looking like they're waiting there with a board for Josh Strang. First ride for him, was able to get some points on the board there at round one. And there he is coming through. Looking like Lane Michael behind him. Evan Smith there as well. One of the XC2 Landers guys. There is Liam Draper. There's your defending champion in the XC2 class. Oh, look at this. I'm, I'm just now seeing. So with one lap complete, Grant Davis was all the way up to fourth place in the overall on that 922 machine. Uh, so that was your leader in that XC2 class. And we're being told that the drone is tracking down the leaders in the bike only section. We'll have that shot coming at you. But right now, these are the uh, some of the rest of XC1 and the top XC2 riders working their way through here at mile marker number seven on lap number two. Uh, looking at the running order on screen, we know that is no longer accurate. Uh, it's Stu Baylor leading the way. It's actually Johnny Girard up to second place, uh, which is an interesting thing to point out. So Grant Davis, when they checked in with one lap complete, was fourth place in the overall, but Johnny Girard was fifth. Johnny's actually physically up to sixth and in second and in touch with Stu Baylor. If Grant Davis is keeping that same pace, we could potentially see him throwing himself into a podium position uh, in, in the overall. That's impressive, my goodness. Stu Baylor on screen, and now, at just as we say that, he's all alone. Does not have pressure, but there is the 969 of Johnny Girard in second. So that looks to be about a six, seven second gap there. So that went from wheel to wheel to opening up that much that you see on screen there. So Johnny's gonna need to uh, really push the pace to get back up there. If Stu opens that up, I think this is gonna, he's gonna see it as his opportunity. Keep on going, keep on trucking, and try to just get a bigger lead. Two minutes was what uh, he had said he won by a few years ago. Maybe that's his goal again today, yeah. to do it again. Mercy. Safe to say Johnny Girard's all right after a little little wad up there on the start line. Yeah, that was a quick up like we talked about. Looked like he just caught his yeah. handlebar or his fork on, on Ricky's bike and just kind of got pulled down. It, it almost looked like he just kind of did that little head shake yeah, out of did, disgust. Yeah. And uh, we're joined back in here with uh, Zach Heron. He's hopping back in. I know he was down checking in on some things on the pits. But uh, here we see on screen it is still Stu Baylor leading the way. And, oh. So, uh, was not able to get a word down at the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna tents. I uh, was told no by a lot of different people. Sure. Obviously, Craig pretty dejected down there. But the entire team, I think they're trying to figure out what went yeah. on, what happened yeah. uh, before they want to say anything. But just showing the guys here in the booth a couple of bikes of Craig's, a couple of pictures of Craig's bike. And I've seen a lot of wadded bikes up in my day. Crazy. As both of you have, I'm sure that's, that's one of the worst. Yeah. There's uh yeah, we'll let them go. Yeah, exactly. We, we have no yeah. idea what's happening there. There's a lot going on in those photos. So um, Johnny Girard on screen there in second place. And it looks like uh, Stu Baylor still out front there on the 514 machine leading the way. Uh, they've got about five miles to go. And so we see him check in with two laps complete, see what the gap is then. And if these two are, in fact, as it looks on screen, starting to stretch away a little bit from our third and fourth place riders, which is... Uh, Jordan Ashburn and Ricky Russell there in third and fourth, and those two have swapped positions. So a lot of position swaps going on early here, Zach. It looks like uh, Johnny picking his way through here, and I think we had a chance to actually catch up with our round one winner as we headed into racing action today. Yeah, Florida has this sand that's, uh, it's just like 
nothing else, honestly, you've ever ridden, especially right in this area where we're at. And uh, it's not like Southwick uh, sand or anything like that from, from up where I'm from or, or anywhere, honestly. It's uh, super deep, sugary sand. And uh, this place is brutal, man. It's uh, definitely the most physically demanding race of the year and uh, it'll beat you down and uh, keep you there if you let it. So uh, I guess it's just, uh, it's definitely a, a mental game out here and uh, who can withstand the uh, suffering of pounding sandals for three hours. So I'm excited and uh, it's definitely, yeah, it's just definitely one of the most, uh, most grueling races. So the, the whoops get deep and uh, you know, the more tired the guys get out there and, and back in the A classes and B classes, you know, they'll they'll roll the whoops and they'll gas it at the bottom and uh, that just makes it deeper and deeper and deeper and you know eventually we'll co come through and you know we can't skim all the whoops it's tight out there and uh, it's turning and, and trees and stuff like that but we try to hit the tops of the whoops and and uh, stay on top of things it makes it a little bit easier on us but you can't always do that it's uh, tight and, and windy and you got lappers and you know trees and big palm metal roots and stuff like that that want to take your uh, wheels out from underneath you so it's cool uh, yeah just uh, it's uh, it, it's grueling to get through the whoops I mean especially about three four miles uh, over near the finish line that's kind of I would say the worst section here the sand is just deep and sugary and it's very tight and windy and uh, there's not much flow so you gotta just kind of muscle through there and by the time you're done with that three or four miles, you're, uh, you're glad you're out of it and looking forward to the rest of the track. Well, there you go. Round one winner back and uh, currently sitting in the number two spot talking about just how grueling this course is and how, you know, as much as you want to, you can't quite get on top of everything. Sometimes as much as you try to skim the whoops, it's just such a different type of sand and it is just physically, physically demanding, Zach. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, uh, somebody that's got probably plenty of time of pounding sand up there in Massachusetts, I mean, you can see the preparation, right? We saw it yesterday. A lot of these riders choosing to come down to Florida to train. And then here today, uh, whether it's in Florida or not, just being comfortable in these type of conditions is key. And uh, clearly it seems to be working well for the 969 of Johnny Girard. Yeah, sitting there in second. There is third place, Jordan Ashburn. And it looks like he has lost Ricky Russell. Ricky Russell was hot on his heels. Uh, looks like Jordan maybe putting a little bit faster pace down there the last couple miles. And now we're cutting back to Johnny Girard again, right up the middle, taking those lines, trying to close back up on the 514 Red Bear Racing Kawasaki, Rocky Mountain Red Bear Racing Kawasaki of Stu Baylor. That's full send right there. Yep. That's right up the middle. Uh, and wow, Stu's not maybe opened it up much more, but he's definitely uh, gained a couple more seconds since we saw him there in that last camera shot. So he's really ripping right now. Be curious to see the way the pace changes with Stu being out front by himself. Is he going to keep hammering down? Obviously, they've got teams communicating to them throughout the throughout the course of a lap. But Gerard now trying to see. Looks like Gerard's taking a couple of insides. Stu's kind of just just blowing through this stuff. Just the, the quicker I get into it, the quicker I get out of it. Looks like Johnny's trying to tiptoe around a couple of different spots. Well, that, that spot right there is where Stu tried to take that inside line last lap and kind of buried it. Uh, was able to get through, didn't lose any positions, but uh, that's where you kind of find those holes that get deeper maybe a little bit than when you bicycled it this morning. There was, again, a morning race, a youth race and a morning race out there so far today, and a lot of them shared at least portions of this track, so the track is always changing, ever dynamic, and uh, you got to kind of watch, especially when the water... Oh, look at that. So that was Stu Baylor in taking on some fuel there and now Johnny Girard in they're going to give him the update a little bit of uh let him know what's going on out there but he can stu see Stu Baylor he knows uh exactly what's going on it looks like the bike almost didn't want to take off at first he kind of stumbled over the shifter and that's the difference and as you can see the team they're trying to spray look like that was the radiators they were primarily focused on I know sometimes uh, they go and hit the seat as well to try to keep the riders Traction probably not uh, not quite as much of an issue with the sand on this one. I know I heard you as I was headed down to the pit. So you get very exfoliated <laughs> yes. by the end of the week. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of grip. <laughs> a lot of grip. Uh, Johnny Girard there still in second. Jordan Ashburn in and out of his coastal racing gas gas pits. Looking like he took uh, the goggles, the whole gamut, everything he needed to get freshened up. And then we saw Ricky Russell working his way over towards that Ampro Yamaha team. Looking to get himself some fuel, maybe some goggles. Assuming he was stopping, we didn't actually see him pull in. But uh, with what would be two laps complete uh, coming up 
uh, right about an hour, a little over an hour, they're going to be here. Uh, so looking like, obviously, the guys that have stopped now for sure are going to be on a two-lap strategy. No way that they would be able to make it to the end from here. So Stu Baylor and uh, Jordan Ashburn and Johnny Gerard, we know for sure, will be having to stop again for fuel later in the race. Pit strategy coming into play. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. Uh, Johnny is on the ATV side. We were anticipating, hey, maybe if we go five, guys got to take uh, two pit stops because they're using so much more fuel on the ATV side. Do you see the same thing on the bike side in sandy conditions like this? Uh, as far as fuel consumption, yes. I yeah. can tell you having worked with you know some riders on the bike side of things, the fuel consumption is higher in Florida, significantly higher than it is anywhere else. A lot of it has to do with load on the engine, also wheel spin. Uh, the more you're spinning, obviously you're not making forward ground while you're burning the fuel. Uh, so it, it's just not as efficient. Uh, a hard pack track where you're getting, or a loamy track that is, doesn't create a lot of drag and, and you're getting good grip, you're probably going to get your best fuel mileage. Some might say, well, you know, it's pretty flat down here, but, you know, the, the machines are really are always under a load. There's always a drag on the engine and it, it's just burning a lot of fuel. See how it plays out still early. We are getting close to a completed lap number two, about three minutes out. And we should see our leaders check in. We'll get uh, an exact time on those gaps. I got to tell you, this is this looks like a full blitz pace mm -hmm. to me from Stu Baylor. I mean, he's right through the center of the water, not taking his time picking lines. Uh, just absolutely put. Look at that. That's what you call a cross right there. He said, well, none of these lines look good, so I'm going to make my own. Going into one and just turning 45 degrees. There he does it again. You can see a lot of times that that's a that's a veteran move there. If all the lines look used up, you can kind of use the good dirt in between them and just go to 45 or a 90 degree even angle across them and make one line out of uh, six or seven, which is what we just saw him do multiple times through that section of pines there. And he really looks like he's on rails right now. Yeah, one of the things we heard Bryson Neal say yesterday was I had to manhandle this ATV to, yeah. to go where I wanted. Now, he was having some steering stabilizer issues as well, but he said just the conditions out here, it's the ruts are so deep, and they've got just enough uh, consistency to where it's hard to get out of the main rut. Looking like Stu doing the same thing, manhandling that Kawasaki right now. Yeah, he's, he's very aggressive right now, and it's translating into just a little bit of a lead over the 969 of Johnny Girard. Oh, even a little bit less of a lead. So as fast Whoa. as Stu looked through there, looks like Johnny Girard might have even uh, been pushing even harder because now he's basically back to the rear wheel. We saw they, you know, there was a good gap even after the pit stop. So he didn't make up the time in the stop this time. Want to give a shout out to uh, Stu's pit crew. We, oh, they, heck yeah. They felt we were a little hard on him. Stu coming in with the lead, <laughs> it was leaving with today. the lead today. So good stop for those guys. Now they got one more. They That's might right. even be able to do it a little bit faster. They wanted us to play some NASCAR sounds over the stop <laughs> and see if we could get like, you know, the impact wrenches. The there it but, is. But uh, we didn't, uh, we didn't get that in time. Maybe we'll have to talk to our producer. But those guys were. Disappointed in themselves, but said, hey, we're going to do better. Yeah. We're going to get him in and out. We're not going to cost him any positions. And they did just that. So great yeah. job to those guys over at the uh, Rocky Mountain Red we, Bear Kawasaki team. We actually got a front row seat for that. Stu was there as well. And he's like, don't worry about what I'm saying. He's like, I'm going to come into the pits, and I'm going to say what I need to say. You don't need to worry about that. So they got her dialed today. And, and that's some interesting insight, Mikey, because if for you sure. saw the video on social media, Stu was coming in, and he was talking about uh, something had happened as a result of a crash, and his, his uh, clutch lever was hanging up. It wouldn't disengage yeah. properly. He was letting them know that just in case it become a bigger issue later in the race and his fuel man was also his mechanic so he's trying to listen to what Stu's saying and it's taking his focus away from getting the fuel jug into the dry brake receiver and Stu just looked at him and said again I yeah. told you and he wasn't mad like hey this is moving forward get the fuel in first and then we'll have our discussion yeah. about what's going on with the bike it's all just a learning process sure. it's still a new team you know i believe he's been with Stu. this is now the second year yeah I he's been so. his i believe his his mechanic and uh when you're learning you're getting closer to uh, getting it right and yep. today they got it right yeah they, they got her dialed well when they checked in two and a half 2.5 seconds was the gap uh and the rest of the pack has checked in ricky russell in the three spot 33 and a half seconds back jordan ashburn in fourth two and a half back from Ricky Russell. Lyndon Snodgrass having a day so far up into the number five position and Grant Baylor in sixth. That rundown tells me something. Ricky Russell did not pit because that, he was behind yes. Jordan Ashburn. Yeah, right. We saw him pass Ashburn in the pits. But if he would have stopped, Ashburn was taking off just as Ricky Russell came by the camera shot, meaning Ricky Russell did not pit on lap two. So we know he will have to pit on lap three, which if this works out to be as it kind of looks like it may a six lap race that would mean ricky russell would be only on a one strap strategy if he lap if he stops next lap on lap number three Stu baylor on screen leading the way man that is a full moto pace right there 
And now he's opened the gap back up over Johnny Girard. Not much, but just a couple of seconds there. Toth, uh, by the way, XC2 guys. Josh Toth has checked in, as I mentioned, and Grant Davis. Both of those guys uh, on adjusted time in the four or the five and six spot. That's that's great for Josh Toth. I mean, Very. You know, to come, I think, uh, last race, maybe four or five. He was off the podium, yeah. but, but inside the top five, I believe, or right around the top five. Uh, so to be leading here after two laps of racing and, uh, you know, Grant Davis, who was up in that fourth place spot at the completion of lap number one on corrected time, those guys absolutely blitzing. You don't have to go too far back there. Uh, you have to go down to 11th place overall. Angus Riordan uh, looks like he has checked in as well. And he is ooh, one minute and 13 seconds behind. Wow. So that is a pretty good size gap. It looked a little closer there, but uh, minute 13 from second to third in XC2 with uh, Grant Davis in the number two spot and his teammate at that Landers Racing KTM team there in third, Angus Riordan, who is also our round one winner. And Chief Meteorologist Zach Heron there. I lean, oh, there oh, I lean my head out of the trail. Get the good old, you know, put the eyes uh -oh. on it. It does look like it's moving to the side of us, but I'm just saying, if that thing decides to open up, it is going to change this race significantly. This is what we get for bragging to our friends in Daytona that we had sunshine and beautiful weather. All right, well, hey, Stu Baylor setting a blistering pace, trying to run out front early and make a statement here in Palaka, but Johnny Girard refusing to let him out of his sights. We've got a lot of racing left. We are only about a third into this thing. We'll be right back with more from the Wild Boar GNCC. since the very beginning. 20 laps, the main event, the Mons of Lassavir. Organizing the industry and building champions. <laughs> 100 years of defending your rights to ride into the future. Turn off, officer, right in now. Community family, teamwork. It's what we have stood on for over a decade. Hauling might be what we do at the surface, but it's much deeper than that. Because what you need matters. If you need a haul, give us a call at 724-852-4488. For 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, we at JD Enterprises are prepared to serve you. It's tough. It's, a, it's definitely a full-time job. Um, we, every, all top uh, 20 are full-time training and riding throughout every week. 
um, just keeps, the intensity just keeps building. We're all getting more fit and not necessarily faster, but faster throughout the whole three hours. We, uh, we used to be a little bit of a dirt like uh, strategy of preserving, and now it's more of a go, go, go the whole time. And it's, uh, it's getting harder and harder. We're getting faster and faster. And um, I don't know. I, I, I think every year we're getting faster, but it's hard, hard to say that, but it just feels like it. Uh, Ricky Russell is absolutely correct. Everything he said right there is exactly what we're seeing out of Stu Baylor, out of Johnny Girard, out of Ricky Russell to where uh, Johnny, like, like Ricky was saying, years ago there was like a pace. You'd pace yourself. You knew this was going to be a grueling round, so guys would kind of wait until that third hour, forget it, throw it out the window. As soon as the flag drops from Ricky uh, Towery, it's go. Yeah, 100%, and that is how it used to be. It used to be kind of a trail ride for yeah. the first at least 45 minutes to an hour on ATVs. And, you know, over an hour sometimes on the bikes, you'd see him. I mean, when you say trail ride, that's a very fast yeah. trail ride. Nobody was trying to set a blistering pace. You were just kind of figuring up track, figuring out your lines, you know, making sure you had the setup you wanted for the day, and then they'd sprint to the finish. And then it's just evolved like yeah. everything else over the years. So uh, as we, as I mentioned, or as Ricky Russell alluded to, it's kind of wild to watch the transition from how this track looks on a Friday on to race day. And we got a little feature for you, and we're going to throw it down live in a moment to Jackson Burrell to give you that perspective. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the FMF PowerPoint. We are here on Friday to give you guys a look at how the course is before any of the riders touch it. As you can see, things are smooth as of right now, but it will not stay that way long once the racing has started. As you can see over here on the hill, there is a lot of loose sand that will be thrown around and will form all kinds of different obstacles here for these riders. Let's jump to the races and see how it looks. All right, guys, we are back down here close by the FMF PowerPoint. And as you can see down here on the track, the line starting to form. Everybody fumbling into this inside where it is getting very chopped up. We've got some big roots over here to the side that all the riders are going through. And it is going to get chopped up over these next closing laps of this rap. So, guys, we'll throw it back to you. We'll see if we can't go find some more parts of the track to check out. So very cool, Johnny. Kind of puts it in perspective there of, hey, it's this nice white sandy beach. And then we come and we tear it up. We churn it up and it gets gnarly. And it keeps continuing to evolve, not just really from uh, Saturday, but today as well from the start of this race to the end. Yeah, absolutely. Ever-changing, always evolving, and just getting tougher and tougher. Grueling is the word that we yeah, use. Grueling. And uh, I believe we've got uh, Zach Heron down in the uh, vendor's row area, and uh, he's checking out some cool things over at the Moto Tees setup. Absolutely, guys. we got a ton of great stuff going on out here at Moto Tees. Fun fact for you guys, if you're planning on coming to a GNCC throughout the year, you can actually pre-order your very own Moto Tees on the Tuesday before your event, T-shirt Tuesdays, of course. I say it all the time. How else is everyone at Casual Fridays at work? How else is everyone at school going to know that you're at one of the best races in the country if you don't walk home with your very own Moto Tees T-shirt? So make sure to come check them out, whether you're here in person or online at mototees.com. Got some fans down there getting some T-shirts. Remember, the event doesn't count unless you get the T-shirt. Waiting for our leaders. We're watching the uh, the Monster Mile here, mile marker number seven. And Stu Baylor, see if he's still leading the way on that blistering pace and see what that gap is, Johnny. Uh, last time we saw him, it was right, what did you think, about that four, five second mark? So <clears throat> Yeah, it was. Uh, it had been up around six or seven, and then they were back to almost wheel to wheel, and then it looked like Stu was starting to stretch it out just a little bit again. Uh, one big factor that we're seeing on screen right now, lap riders. A lot of riders yeah. streaming their way through here. Uh, a little confused. I think this is the FMF PowerPoint. Their graphic yeah, says Monster okay. Mile. But uh, the, the other side of this section is the Monster Mile. This is the FMF PowerPoint. And uh, at the seven-mile marker, a lot of lapped riders coming through. That means, obviously, Stu Baylor, Johnny Girard, all the rest, they have to work their way, pick their way through each and every one of these riders. We talked about it in yesterday's show. We've talked about it so many times. A lot of it comes down to luck in where you catch the lappers. Yep. How you get through them, how you navigate them whether you're a person that yells, revs, just quietly sits back there and waits for your opportunity. That's all part of the strategy. But sometimes it really just cause, does come down to luck and timing. One thing you know and you've learned over the years, if you're a top rider, you've got somebody in front of you, 
you're worried about them kind of getting away, yeah. you do not want to leave any gap between you and them when it comes to getting into left riders. Even five seconds can be enough that a left rider will take a look back after they pull over. In this case, oh, Stu, yeah. let's do by, pull, look back. Okay, nobody behind them, pull in. Now that guy's then, suddenly a back marker in your way <laughs> in an obstacle. Whereas if you're right behind Stu, kind of in the same corner at the same time, if you're Johnny Girard, you're when that guy pulls over, you're going to get the pass at the exact same time. And it's almost like having a uh, a police escort, if you yeah, will. That's a, exactly the analogy I was going to go with is when you see the uh, – you know, the state bull on the interstate, and you're thinking, okay, I need X amount of cars in between me and him. That's that's legitimately what we're doing out here. If you're that leader, every time you get around a lap rider, you're saying to yourself, okay, there's one more, one more. Let me put as many of these guys in between us as possible. Yeah, and it works both ways. I mean, there's an advantage to being up front if you can get through the lappers clean and kind of leave <clears throat> enough time for them to pull back in. Uh, they can sometimes act as as you know blockers yeah. it's not intentional but it's sure. just part of the race but there's also a, a, a advantage to being in second if you are a little ways down the first rider through arguably should have the most difficult time that's the rider that has to absolutely you know they're the, at that point the, the lap riders aren't expecting the leaders to come through suddenly they they feel this thunder you know they hear this bike rumbling and they realize somebody's going really fast behind me Oh, that's a leader. Then they have the awareness of, oh, there's going to be more of them coming, whether it's in two seconds or two minutes, and and then they're kind of ready for it. So Stu Baylor's in uh, in the position where he's the one having to. Looks like those might be our leaders. I think that's Stu getting ready to pop down there, and Johnny Gerard just behind him, and that it is. So I don't know what you want to call that gap, but how's not much sound? Not much. It's not quite baby blanket gap yet, but. Into the, I mean, bottom line is Johnny Girard's right there. A one mistake by Stu gets caught by the lap traffic like we've been talking about. Johnny Girard can capitalize or miss a line. I mean, we saw that yesterday with Bryson Neal and Walker Fowler. Um, and we didn't really catch on camera at least Bryson missing it. Uh, or opposite, I guess. But we caught, uh, or Bryson, Bryson caught it second, excuse yep. me, and was able to correct it quicker than Walker was. Um, so several scenarios uh, where this can flip-flop back and forth. And we actually got a, an update on the podium. I, I think he might have mentioned in his post-race interview, Walker had said the reason why he flipped around. It, he thought it was a good line until he realized as going through the it. The candy stripes. The candy yep. stripe placards, meaning that you have to go between those. Now, again, you can kind of not self penalize but if you if it's an honest mistake and you realize hey i needed to go there yep. you can turn around and go back sure. that way with caution make sure nobody's coming the other way and that's exactly what both of those guys they both missed the placards but bryson was able to turn around quicker and get to where they needed to be good when rolling two laps in about 14 minutes before we should see a third lap completed Stu baylor leading johnny gerard on his heels Russell third, Ashburn fourth, and Josh Toth out of that XC2 on adjusted time in the five spot. Based off those time predictions, this thing is going to work out to be basically exactly mm -hmm. three hours with a six-lap race. Uh, we don't make those calls. We, we leave that to the timing and yeah. scoring experts, but uh, we are under the assumption based on time that that's pretty much what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, we do know that we've got two laps complete. Uh, we will see likely... Um, at least Ricky Russell coming in to get fuel this lap because we know he oh, did bypass right. his pits uh, at the completion of lap number two when the other three of the top four, Stu Baylor, Johnny Girard, and Jordan Ashburn all did uh, take fuel and Ricky Russell did uh, did not. So he, he got the advantage there, but now he's got to stop this next lap. And you anticipate that'll be his only fuel stop? Uh, I would think, you know, but again, maybe like, a splash like we talked yeah, about right, yesterday. Okay. If you get in a position where you have to stop later in the race, whether it's to, you know, when I say to get a drink, obviously we know these guys take drink bottles yep. from the straw and they'll take them on the fly. But if he wants to go ahead and stop and actually get a drink, get some fresh goggles, maybe some gloves, whatever it may be, leader, leader, leader on leader. screen. Stu Baylor leading the way, and you can see this are those lap riders I was talking about. Man. He takes an outside line, scoots around, and uh, opens it up a little bit over that guy right there, the 969 of Johnny Girard on that factory FMF Red Bull back machine. Stu Baylor still leading the way, just not uh, not going to give Johnny anything. He's going to make him work no. for it, that's for sure. No, Stu not letting up, still running that blistering pace. And coursing his way through the lap traffic. Great shot right there. By the way, gave him a shout out yesterday. Daniel Rogerson, welcome back for the weekend. Uh, no drone at Daytona. So he said, hey, I'm going to come back, hang out with you boys at Racer TV. Watching their line choices right there and moving across. Ooh, little foot out. Ooh, 
man. That was, uh, yeah, that's a little risky, but they're going for it. He doesn't want to give up the lead. Stu Baylor just wheeling across that inside line, and you saw just how deep it was. Johnny Gerard looked like he kind of paused there. He did. He was like, ah, well, I'm committed at this <laughs> point. <laughs> okay, so. Stu, you made it. Stu lifted a leg up. Yeah, Johnny getting a little sideways, kind of cross-rutted, but uh, corrected quickly and right back to the rear wheel of Stu Baylor. These two just absolutely throwing down right now. So reminiscent of what we saw yesterday. If you tuned in and watched the ATV race, we saw Bryce and Neil leading the way, Walker Fowler in second, and uh, it seemed like they just had a bit more pace than the rest. We don't know. The gap back to Jordan Ashburn was only 33. 33 set. Well, actually, sorry, it was Ricky Russell when they checked in with two laps complete. Only 33 seconds, so Ricky could just be just off the, uh, the Yamaha Racing Live Oh, Stu gets stuck, and yeah, that's right. Stu gets stuck, and Johnny Girard, your new leader. There you go. So just that quickly, you take a questionable, uh, you know, rut, and next thing you know, you do lose just a couple bike lengths. Johnny Girard right to the front, and Stu Baylor now the one giving chase. So now Stu Baylor, after setting that pace, exerting a lot of energy, Johnny, now he's got to reset and find it in him again to go back and catch Johnny Girard. Yeah, well, he's right there. He yep. can still see him. I, I don't think that, uh, if anything, I think it may almost become an advantage for, um, may almost become an advantage for Stu because now he can see what Johnny's doing. He can rest up a little bit. <clears throat> you know, he, he can kind of catch his breath, let the heart rate come down a little bit. He use a lot of energy when you're leading. <laughs> Stu's a smart rider. He wouldn't have been out front if he didn't want to be. Uh, but at the same time, this is going to give him kind of a little reset. And it sounds like we now have Zach Heron down in the pits with Craig DeLong. Take it away, Zach. Hey, guys. Yeah, we are down here in the pits with the number one. Obviously, we saw some extreme damage to that Husqvarna machine. Why don't you take us through what happened? Uh, yeah, just a, a bad start and put myself in the back. I lost my goggles and was way back. And uh, actually, the front two XC2 kids called us. And uh, basically what happened is I was following close, and I... We got close to this one tree, and I, before I knew it, I was driving right in this tree like the berm led right to the tree. So I had nowhere to go and crashed. And when I picked my st my bike up, I uh, had broken a part of my bike, and uh, it wasn't able to, to keep moving forward. So I took my bike off the track and uh, laid it on the ground, and I was close to the FMF power point, so I took off running towards the power point to try to find somebody to, you know, give me some parts to keep going. And uh, when we came... Um, when we came back, the bike was it started in a fire, so um, that was all my fault. I should have leaned it up on a tree and uh, you know saved itself. So I uh, I take full blame for that one, and uh, yeah, just unfortunate. It's the last two races have uh, obviously not gone to plan, so I'm uh, I'm a little embarrassed just because last year I felt like I could do uh, you know I had a I could do no wrong in this last year, and this year it's just been just one thing after another. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been tough, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Now, let's ask as far as the, we've seen the bike. Let's talk about the body. How are you feeling? Are you okay? No, I'm good. I'm fine. I um, I got out lucky. I was good. Just hit the tree, and honestly, just hit the tree, and like kind of just over the bars a little bit slow. No problem. And yeah, it's it's unfortunate because. Uh, Two, uh, two races in a row where, you know, I, I hurt the bike. You know, I, I caused issues. So I'm uh, going to have to take a, uh, take a step back and uh, see if I can figure out how to not do that next week. So. Well, there, there you go, guys. There's some tough luck for the number one, but he is okay and ready to come out swinging at round three. Well, just a reminder, uh, who won Georgia last year? Yeah, Craig DeLong Craig got DeLong. his championship so. season rolling. Uh, you know, that that's tough to hear. It's tough to watch. Uh, obviously, the big relief for us knowing that Craig is okay. Yeah. Um, and that takes a, a big man to sit there and say, yeah. you know, hey, this was 100% on me. Um, obviously saying I made a mistake. It was a small crash that maybe wouldn't have been a big deal. Had a small issue. Was working to try to get it fixed. I, you know, I, I'm not going to speak for Craig or, or correct him, but I think in the moment to lay the bike down, for sure. I, I don't I don't see that as something he did wrong, yeah. obviously. My guess, and I'm not speculating, I'm not out here looking at it. My assumption <laughs> yeah. is all of these bikes have, every bike, every brand, has a fuel tank vent mm -hmm. that early in the race. You don't realize how full that tank still is. Uh, the, the engine is hot. My assumption, pure 100% speculation, fuel from a fuel tank vent makes contact with the hot exhaust. 
causes ignition. You have a small fire. They got it put out. Nobody was injured. Yep. But it made it put damage to the bike that was now no longer able to be repaired. Yep. And ending him with a no points day, learning experience. Yeah. Uh, you'll take it from there, and you know, tough to see the champ in that kind of situation. Yeah, but uh, I don't think that'll be the last we see no. of, of Craig DeLong fighting. Uh, for race wins and, and potentially even a championship here in 2024. That's it. I mean, he knows what he's capable of. He's got the number one plate for a reason. And, and I'm with you, Johnny. I think it's easy for us to sit back and speculate the bonehead move. But yeah. when you're in the heat of the moment, I don't care if it's racing, life, whatever. Uh, that's that's a tough on the fly decision. Well, to me, I mean, the part he said that he didn't really address, uh, and we do see our battle on the screen here still, and it is still Johnny Girard leading the way. Hot on his heels, the 514 of Stu Baylor. You know, it shows a lot of heart realizing, hey, I made a mistake, the bike is broken. Yep. I'm gonna run in my riding gear mm -hmm. to the FMF power point that is nearby. Now, I didn't say how nearby. It sure. could have been a quarter mile. Yeah. You know, it could have been a mile, could have been 100 yards. But, you know, to say like, hey man, I'm not out of this thing. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna try to do everything yep. I can. I think it's important for him to also look back and say, you know, I was what I did in the moment, I'm gonna learn from, yep. but I was doing what I thought was best. I was rushing to try to get the parts to get the bike repaired. That's it. Meanwhile, Johnny Girard out in front. Stu Baylor in pursuit. They are Stu kind of inching his way into the same camera shot here and there as this, he's got that accordion effect. Oh, what do you think of line choices right there, Johnny? Well, so what I was going to say is this is kind of the section of the track, not exactly right here, but where we're coming up to is where we saw Stu really, really pushing the pace and looked like he had some really good lines there last lap. So this is going to be really cool. Folks, tune in. Check this out. Do not step away from your television or your phone or whatever you're watching us on here because we might see a pass for the lead or at least some bar-to-bar -bar banging action because I think Stu Baylor might have some lines up his sleeve, and there we see one of them off to the left but realizing, oh, oh no. Nope. Going for it. Oh, had to check right back in. Lap riders coming into play, and obviously we see the white string track barriers, but look at this. There it is. And there it is. There's the pass for the lead. Right up the inside, Johnny Gallagher. That was abs mercy sakes alive. He finds another gear right there. Yeah, that's that's one of those things. He set that up by going out to the outside there, able to square it up, come across. He just had better drive coming out into that section, was able to uh, take that right line and uh, push his way past the 969 of Johnny Girard. There we go. Back and forth, back and forth. We'll take it. Good racing here on Racer TV. So, Stu Baylor, your new old leader again. I won't be mad if we have to say that a few times today. Yeah, Let's get exciting. some back and forth. The last thing you you want to see in a race like this is just uh, somebody get out front and uh, check out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it shows their, their prowess, sure. shows their preparation, how strong they are. But right now we're seeing two guys very evenly matched. And for all we know, just off camera, there could be another handful of guys making their play to get themselves up in this battle for the win. I don't know that I'm confident yet in saying that it's just these two. Yeah. I think we're not quite to the halfway mark. We're getting very close. They're working their way towards the GBC Tires pit stop area, meaning that they will be coming through. Most likely these two guys will be bypassing the pits this lap, but Ricky Russell, who last we saw or last we knew, was in third, but with some heavy pressure from Jordan Ashburn, he will be needing to stop. A little dab right there by Stu, hauling it, <laughs> looking like a speedboat. Johnny much more cautious through that one water hole there, kind of Stu wheelied across it, and Johnny opting to just slow down a little bit, drop the front end in, and say, no, nah, I, I think I'm going to not take my chances on that one. And it's not really seeming to favor one or the other. Stu not really getting away. Johnny not able to catch up any significant amount of time. And, man, to your credit, like, this has changed so much just in the time they've been racing. You can see some of those mud holes developing and just getting a little bit deeper each time. Both guys opting for just about identical lines right there. They're cheering on Johnny Girard. Go get him. Stu real cautious around that corner. And we hear thunder outside of our Racer TV studios. Sounds like uh, we'll keep watching the water there and see if we see some raindrops yeah. falling. But uh, we get to see some windows down outside. Folks, if you're listening here and you're out in the woods, go roll your windows up. But yeah, uh, looking like idea. it's going to start raining. Uh, we do know we had some potential showers coming through. Again, here we are, Yamaha Racing Live Drone coming into the pro pits. Again, both those guys looking like they will be bypassing their respective semis, and they do. Stu Baylor still leading the way. Johnny Girard still in second. And uh, there is a rider behind them. I don't believe that's Ricky Russell or Jordan Ashburn. Uh, shout out to Josh Toth. Last we saw, leading the way in that XC2 Pro Lights class uh, with pressure from behind from the 922 of Grant Davis, who finished third at our opening round just two weeks ago. Buzz and pass the auxiliary pits. There go one and two, Stu and Johnny Girard. Now, Ricky Russell, we know, is going to have to pit. 
Did Ashburn pit? Ashburn did he pit. Did. Okay. That's how Ricky Russell got around him, actually. That's right. Um, and I, I may be wrong. It looked like I saw Jordan Ashburn off to the right from that drone shot just a moment ago. Uh, how far back exactly he was, I don't know. I don't. You know, there was a whole section of track involved there. Could have been 20 seconds, section of track involved there. Could have been 20 seconds, could have been 45. Uh, so we'll wait until we can actually get a official transponder scoring check-in. Uh, and again, Ricky Russell also could have been in between yeah. them there. So we don't know if it's still Ricky holding on to third or if Jordan Ashburn has been able to wrestle that position back away, that final podium position, an ever-important podium position. Getting down to it, uh, under two minutes to go now for lap, or completed lap number three. And as Johnny said, we should be, as we anticipate, six lap race right on time for that. So do, not anticipating a two lap card here. Yeah, and again, we always want to clarify, we do not make those decisions right. here in the Racer TV booth. Not official. It comes down to our live timing and scoring officials. Uh, they're down there in the scoring trailer. They're adding up the lap times. They're figuring how much faster, how much slower the track's going to get, and they get as close as they can to the guidelines set within the rule book for these races. Uh, I'll tell you what, so far they've been nailing it this yeah. year. Yeah, it has uh, been solid. A couple times we weren't even quite certain how it was going to pan out, and next thing we know, we're like, well, we had it wrong, and they had it right, yeah. and that's why they do that job, and we sit here and talk about some guys riding dirt bikes on screen. That's it. So Stu Baylor leading the way, Johnny Gerard rolling in. And there he there is. There he is, there is the 514. So we're gonna be checking in here to the finish line momentarily, just under a minute to go now. Uh, we'll get an idea of what it's looking like on the timing, looking for that third place ride, Johnny. Last time, it might be Ashburn coming through yeah we, i i kind of at have least anticipated feeling well it was we knew it was ricky russell yeah. when they checked in at scoring uh based on their pace the previous lap jordan seemed to be like he'd found something again it could be just ricky um potentially finding a you know a deep hole and getting yeah. stuck for a minute but he had dropped back a little bit behind jordan ashburn so you know we can speculate we don't know <laughs> it could it. be jordan ashburn could be ricky russell could be josh Oath. he could work his way up there into the top three overall on corrected time or physically uh with that pressure from uh grant davis um Lennon Snodgrass having a good ride there in fifth in that XE1 class, and then Grant Baylor in sixth, the rider that we saw put in a big, big charge late in our race uh, just two weeks ago at Big Buck to land himself in that final podium position, making it two Baylors on the podium. Uh, as they run right now, only one, so the Grizzly Grant needs to get going yeah. if he wants to uh, keep the podium streak alive. Which he has been known to do this late in the race, second half. Grizzly turns it on. There he is Leader. now checking in, 5-1-4. Stu Baylor, it, you see, he kind of threw his, his hand up there. Was that? I don't know if maybe he was expecting a two-lap card, or if he was upset about the rain, or maybe just waving to someone. I don't know. But there was definitely in a, a in a gesture of hand up, and I'm almost going to say that I think he was expecting a two-lap card, possibly, and not getting. And by the way, we uh, the rain has begun to come down pretty significantly, so uh, we will not be able to fly our drone in these conditions. But we've got plenty of camera shots out there. We're still going to bring you all the good coverage, so don't well, worry there. The good thing about sticking with this camera right here is we'll find out, we'll be able to visibly That's see it. when our third place rider checks in. Uh, that is not him there. We'll keep and we'll wait and we'll watch for him. <laughs> Keep that camera there on the approach to the finish line so we can see when either Jordan Ashburn or Ricky Russell, uh, Lyndon Snodgrass, Grant Baylor, Rich, uh, Rich Lafferty. Right, there Rich, you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ryder Lafferty, Mike Wachowski, all those guys vying for trying to get to uh, a podium position. You can see the rain really starting to come down heavy now. With the umbrellas out, the fans kind of taking cover. And what looks to me to be Jordan Ashburn coming across the line, we will refresh our live timing and scoring and find out if uh, that is, in fact, the case. And it is. He's checked in now with three laps complete. One minute, 26 seconds behind our second place rider of Johnny Girard. So that is your podium checked in. Uh, Ricky Russell, the rider that we're expecting next. Uh, 
Or, oh, no, look at this. The Grizzlies putting on a charge, now up to the number four spot. He's made the pass on a couple riders in front of him and is not too far behind. When we refresh that there, Mikey, looks like he is now only 24 seconds out of a podium position, a lap ago, barely inside the top 10. Now all the way up to fourth and putting pressure, hey. almost putting pressure on Jordan Ashburn for that number three spot. You called it, and yeah, like you said, hey, 24 seconds back is Grizzly Grant from a podium position, so as we get into the second half, Boom. look for him. There I thought is. I saw Grant that. Davis. Grant Davis. I just saw him come through, and that means he is now up into the third place overall. He displaces both Ashburn and Baylor on correct time, and Josh Strength, or Josh Strength, Josh Toth now checking in the 206 machine, second place in that XC2. He will slot into the fifth place spot in the overall as they run with corrected time. Wow, the XC2 boys making it exciting. Two of them up there inside the top five as they <laughs> run. And in one of the uh, the most gnarly. Now we go back a year ago, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was the one where Ryder Lafferty, XC2 at the time, had a fourth place uh, OA here. Yeah. He, so uh, not uncommon for our XC2 guys to do well in these conditions. No, it's not. And we've seen XC2 riders on the podium before. We've yeah. never seen an XC2 yeah. rider with a win. And if we look at our total elapsed time, Grant Davis, uh, still about a minute and, uh, let's see, a minute and 40 some seconds uh, behind the lead duo there. So a pretty big gap. Uh, he's going to need to he's going to need to pick it up a little bit to go for that win. But right now, solidly in a podium position is our XE2 leader, Grant Davis. It's impressive. It kind of warms the heart a little bit. That's one of my, my kids that uh, was racing youth when I'd started and, and doing well. So really cool to see those guys growing up and doing well in the three hour race. Man, you can see the uh, the conditions really starting to worsen. You can see how thick the rain is becoming. Uh, it, we're starting to have a harder and harder time seeing Stu Baylor on screen leading the way. Johnny Gerrard still in second. Hey, if anything, the rain's cleaning off these number plates a little bit, making it easier for us to identify the riders. Hard to miss those two because the speed is just intense. They're pushing very, very hard. And, uh, man, it's, uh, it's getting exciting. We got a good battle heating up right here. Stu Baylor leading the way out in front, throwing his hands up. He said, what's going on? We got to continue racing in this. Yes, we do. Johnny Gerrard in hot pursuit. Grant Davis out of the XC2 up into third place on adjusted time. This one is just getting warmed up. We're at the halfway point. We'll be back with more on racertv.com. This is the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruise to sort you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Well, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You got to pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So. Ah, yee. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. It's a big world out there. How do you choose to see it? When you crave the long canyons, rocky trails, rutted tracks, and lonely highways, they become a part of you. Podiums and personal records, we choose it all. Because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. 
You just need to ride where you belong. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles. So you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Round number two of the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized, your AMA National Championship. Watching an absolute heater down here in Palaka. The rain is coming down, going to change the trajectory of this race. And, uh, well, we had to make some audibles. We had to get the drone out of the sky due to the weather. Uh, but, hey, I tell you, really cool opportunity here. Joined in the booth uh, by Brock Glover, the Brock Glover, and uh, one of our representatives from Ducati, Paulo, a former MotoGP rider and champion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Paulo, actually, Paulo. Javadi, he is the director of Ducati Corsa okay. Off-Road. And oh, uh, for those of us of you attending a few of the GNCCs and the motocross mm -hmm. races, Paulo, is, uh, his history is running the Ducati MotoGP program for many, many years and all the success that we've seen in that. And now we keep seeing him po po poking this, around here at the GNCC races. So convinced him to come into the booth and tell us what, uh, what Ducati's doing here at an off-road race. Well, first of all, thanks for having me here. Obviously, it's my first GNCC race. Uh, I've been to a few Supercross events over the past two years, and uh, but my colleagues have been to several GNCC events last year. And uh, wow, what an experience! Very interesting. Uh, as you know, Ducati announced uh, last year that we have an off-road program ongoing, and uh, we just created a new division within uh, Ducati Motor Holding, Ducati Course of Road, and I've been the honor of being named general manager. Obviously, it's uh, an exciting, an exciting uh, job for me because my roots, when I was a teenager, are from motocross, and I wasn't that successful. But you know, the back in the 70s, we were all on 50cc, 125cc motorbikes, trying to become the next world champion. Which was not for me, but luckily now I'm uh, after being associated to Peko Bagnaia and winning two MotoGP consecutive MotoGP World Championship. I have a new a new challenge in front of me, which is uh, bringing Ducati to success also in off-road. Well, tell us, uh, uh, just without getting into too much detail, uh, basically the timeline of what Ducati is feeling. Uh, they would have a bike here in the U.S. competing or at least riding. So give us an annual timeline on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, we showed the bike in its uh, final uh, graphic design livery. In, uh, together with MotoGP and Superbike uh, in, at the end of January when we launched the teams. And uh, actually, recently, Monster Energy released a, a very nice video of Tony Cairoli explaining a little bit his role with Ducati. And, uh, well, in two weeks' time, we have a first race in the Italian Motocross Championship. We take part in the Italian Motocross Championship with a full prototype in order to keep developing the bike. Production is for uh, June 25. So after that, we will ship bikes uh, all over the, the, the world, but mainly to the U.S. because we want to be ready with the homologation for Supercross and National 2026. In the meantime, I came here also because I know we can race here without there we go. needing any homologation. So need any, well, we don't need to import numbers and, uh, and uh, it can be a prototype. So it's interesting. Obviously, we need to consider if and when and how 
we can do it but definitely i was very impressed i mean it's a field incredible such a big number of yep. uh, professional amateurs all together i think it's a great a great uh, package for yeah for people like off-road and yep. uh, families come here with kids and it's really an enjoyable uh, formula actually to see such a long race with pit stops and refueling is something a little bit new for me but uh, i like it well, I, I gotta tell you it, it speaks to my heart i'm a street bike guy first and, and my second bike I ever owned was a ducati monster so uh on behalf of my fellow street bike people yeah come on into g the world of gncc and off-road join me the water's warm it's literally fallen from the sky <laughs> right now uh we would we would love to have you out here but whatever you know the trajectory is of that uh, we're really looking forward to it yeah and and we look forward to uh, to come here obviously the U.S. is the largest market for off-road bikes, and uh, this is where we are going to focus our attention. As I said, the bike is coming along very good for the moment. Uh, you know, we launched the Desmo 450 MX. Uh, one year later, it's uh, going to be coming in 250 form and then the Enduro version. But let's say for next year, it's a 450 year, and uh, we'll consider if and when we can come to do a couple of GNCC rounds. Obviously, it's nothing decided yet, but uh, after coming here and having my colleague Martino Bianchi, who's so enthusiastic about uh, GNCC, uh, we will consider, and then the, the Coop's family is Amen. friends, so we'll try to make it happen. Well, very good. Love it's to hear a it. pleasure having you here, and thank you for spending the time and filling us in uh, what the plans in the future are for Ducati, both obviously in motocross and supercross, but here in GNCC too. Thank you. Thanks, Paolo. Appreciate you. As Paulo representing Ducati right there, much appreciated having him join us in the booth. Motorcycle family, worldwide, GNCC Racing Nation, no doubt about that. Well, we've got a great one going on on, uh, on the broadcast here with uh, Stu Baylor leading the way and Johnny Girard out in front. And we are waiting on our leaders now uh, at the FMF PowerPoint. Waiting on our monitor to switch back over there, Adam. I don't know if you can click something. I got the small screen. There it is. Thank you. So now we're watching what you're watching. And now the folks at home get an idea of what the folks here at the track are facing. And uh, Johnny Gallagher rejoining us back in the booth. Can we throw out the word monsoon? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can say that they are damp. Okay. Uh, there, it, it is a monsoon. Yeah, it's coming down in buckets. Uh, you can see from the puddle there the little small lake on screen. Oh. I think we might have a leader, possibly. Yes, that is a rider going very, very fast. And it is Johnny Girard on the 969 KTM. So I don't know if, if we saw that already. Sorry, I stepped out of the booth. But Johnny Girard is leading the way. Stu Baylor in second with the little gap opened up. What I'll be interesting to see is do these riders have goggles on? We saw Stu Baylor pull a tear off. So he does have goggles on. Did not see if Johnny does. Uh, but, man, vision is going to be so important right now. It's so hard to keep goggles on. There you can see the riders coming by with the goggles hanging from their handlebars. Man, this kind of rain, especially with the sand like this, just absolutely wreaks havoc on your goggles. Yeah, I, these, the visibility right now, it's, it's hard to see on the monitor here, but it's coming down so heavily outside. These are gigantic rain drop, drops. It almost looks like snow coming from the sky. So it's coming down. Now we can see on the monitor here, it's incredibly wet. Pro pits just turning into a swamp in a very quick time. And, uh, you know, will they pull in for roll-ups, you think, get another set of they goggles for roll-ups? Yeah, I mean, you have absolutely. To do it. Yeah. At, at, at this point, like, and you can't – a lot of times you'll see guys in the rain when it's raining this heavy actually go without goggles. Let me finish because I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive. But it's really hard to keep any goggles on because imagine driving down the road at 60 mile an hour. A lot of places on the track these guys are doing 50, 60 mile an hour. And you see all that rain just coming, hitting your windshield wiper, oh. your windshield. Your windshield wipers are going as fast as they can go to barely keep up. Well, imagine doing that, but you're having to either pull roll-offs or pull tear-offs that fast. You would go through, you know, they say the average roll holds about 100 pulls uh, or tear-offs. You can stack 21. Some guys will get crazy and do 28 uh, tear-offs on there. You're going to go through those in a fraction of a mile. I mean, a tenth of a mile. So a lot of times guys will try to go without goggles. Risky proposition here in Florida because that grit, that fine sand, you know, it's always getting roosted up. And even if it's not hitting you in the face, it's already on your face. And then when the water hits mm -hmm. and runs it into the corner of your eyes, you'll find yourself in the EMT medical unit trying to get your eyes washed out. You is As difficult as it is, you really have to try your best to keep goggles on, especially in conditions like this. 
Absolutely. And it's hard. No, it oh. is. It's the truth. And when you're running through here, I mean, I actually have a scar right on the front of my eye from a rock hitting me with no goggles in a race. So it happens. It's not something that you want to you want to have. And disability is so important it, here. And maybe it, it might even get to the point now you can see it's getting so severe. If there's a couple laps left, the riders might stop on each lap to get a new fresh set of goggles. Well, a lot of times what, what I'll tell you, Brock, what we do here in GNCC is if you're on top of things and planning, Johnny Gerrard on screen, you'll actually have goggles stationed. He does not have goggles on. It does not appear mm -hmm. to be. Oh, maybe he does. I yep. think he did, yeah. Um, you'll have goggles stationed at different. That Now, yep. Yep. just to clarify, the pro riders have to stop for fuel in the pro pits, but they can stop for other things such as Correct. drinks, goggles, anything that they need you know, to keep them yep. safely riding. Uh, they can stop anywhere out on the race course. Yep. So a lot of times, if the conditions are like this before you start or if you're anticipating, you'll send mom, dad, sister, team members, truck driver, random people you find on the side of the track with a Ziploc baggie <laughs> yep. full of prepared goggles and say, hey, you go to the two-mile marker, you go to the four-mile marker, you go to the six. That way you have goggles strategically placed around the course whenever your roll-offs, tear-offs, whatever it is, or the goggles just get bad enough. Yep, I can't see out of these anymore. You take them off within a short distance, you're able to get a new fresh well, set. Well, it's like Craig DeLong was trying to get, uh, you know, a, a get his bike repaired. You know, he can do it off. It doesn't have to be in the pro pits to get the repair job. But you can see these ruts now are filling full of water, and uh, the conditions are just getting treacherous. He's, it's a it's a tough race as it is. It's a really rough track. I mean, tire selection, walking from the Dunlop side of things, walking through the paddock, pretty much the entire paddock of pro, the pros had a, a MX-14 paddle tire on their bike. A couple of mixtures of fronts, but in general an aggressive front tire too. So the guys have at least the right tires for these conditions on their bikes. It's just visibility is going to be very, very difficult. Yeah, you can see a lot of these guys' goggles off. We'll wait and we'll watch. We do know last we had seen it was Jordan Ashburn physically in the third place spot in the overall, but was eclipsed on corrected time by the 922 of Grant Davis, who is the leader in that XC2 Pro Lights class. A couple people talking about that earlier this week, saying I think Grant Davis might be the guy to get it done. And I'll be honest, I was I was kind of shocked to hear that. He, he had a great ride here last year. Not shocked. He was on the podium yeah. at uh, at round one for sure. But you know, this is typically a race where a lot of attrition sets in. Grant, a very young rider, I believe still only 17 years old, maybe 18 now, uh, but a young rider that, uh, you know, I wouldn't, oh, Grant Baylor now has taken over the number three spot physically, unless I don't think we missed Jordan Nash there. I don't there. believe I didn't so. see him. And uh, he was 24 seconds, I believe, behind when they checked in at scoring. And there is Ashburn. So that is for sure Grant Baylor. The Grizzly now running physically in a podium position for the overall and in that XC1 Pro class. Just behind him, Jordan Ashburn, the number three factory coastal gas gas machine running in fourth. And then next we should see... Well, look at this. <laughs> He's definitely got those guys on corrected time right now. That's much less than a minute. Man, Grant, Grant Davis, Davis on rails. That... Uh, Landers Racing KTM machine looking like there's no rain out there for him. He's cruising on a nice dry track. Well, speaking of the rain, it's it's nice that the rain's coming down so hard. It's actually cleaning the number that's plates true. at this point. We can read their numbers on the bike right off the front, and it's that's how hard the water's coming down out of the sky. So oh, it's a bummer for Thad that, Ball oh, getting towed in yeah. to the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Red Bear Racing Kawasaki tent there. He is done for the day. Gives us a little shout that we talked about before the rules. If you're towed in, done for the day. Yep. If you can get your machine back under your own power, you can repair it, go back out to the point where you left the course. Once you have been towed, once they've hooked to you with any type of assistance other than manual, they right. can pull you out of a – and it, actually, I think there is an addendum to the rules that if they need to use an ATV or a way to ext ext extricate you from, like, a hole, if you're stuck, you can do that. But once you've been transported via outside assistance, you're done for the day, and you can see – Definitely is. We did just see Nick DeFeo, it looked like. Or was it? I thought it was Linden. Okay, maybe it was, it was Linden. Linden I, if that was Nick DeFeo, I was going to say, wow, we better yeah, check Yeah, I think it was the 178. See. Okay, there we go. Thank you. I Eagle caught a eyes. quick, Eagle quick glimpse. That's to Brock's point. Thank you to the rain for washing <laughs> off front number plates. I didn't see a number. It just to me, for it jumped out, and I thought, wow, that's... Uh, that is quick. He's going to be up into the top five overall from an A class. It is funny. I mean, you can read even the riders that are getting lapped or further back down the field. You read their numbers nice and clear. So, and, it, and speaking of rain, we've been hearing there's been a lot of rain for next week up in uh, 
the general. Mm. And I hope you're coming up and watching that after the Birmingham oh, Supercross. Good. We haven't had a Supercross in uh, the state of Alabama, I think, since Talladega, probably back in the late 80s, early 90s, or whatever that was. It was a long time ago, I know that. But it's going to be fun to be able to come racing over across the state go into Georgia and go to this next round too so looking forward to it just hope it's not totally mud bath but yeah uh, well, hey, if it's, it's anything uh, like hey, last year it, it will be, it will be. <laughs> I, I, I think we can look at the optimistic side and say as bad as it is it almost can't be much worse That's than it was in also in true three Angus Reward on screen that may be second now in RXC or yeah second in RXC two pro lights and one of what appeared to be the Phoenix Hondas behind him. Don't know if it was the 282 of Wachowski or potentially Cody Barnes, maybe Rui Barbosa. Uh, it did look to be a Phoenix Honda, though. And there yep. is your defending champion, Liam Draper, Strang. and then Josh Strang on that factory Sherco. So now we're seeing a bunch of XC1 and XC2 guys running together in formation as we get down a little further in the top 10 in the running order. Yeah. Running through the jungle right there. Love that shot. And uh, I know we were, we're talking about our leaders going back and forth. Gerard, Baylor, Baylor, Gerard, back and forth like the heavyweight battle that it is. And uh, just how much racing has changed over the years and the pace they run now. We had a chance to catch up with Stu Baylor to touch more on that. Thad and I were talking like pulling into the track the other day about how this used to be a GNCC. I, I would have come with my dad and not even raced it um, here at the same place. And it, it was underwater. 21 years ago, I believe it was. So um, at that point, looking looking out and like, this wasn't a realistic goal. It was like, man, that would be cool to be one of those guys, but it was never realistic. And then started clicking off race wins at, at the local level and then to the national level and then national championships. And it became a more realistic goal. And then for the most part of your career, it's like, you're here because you belong here. And it's not that cool because it's, because a lot of times it does take the fun away. And that's a big part of why I did this, but it's like, I see it with a lot of these guys. It becomes not that cool anymore, but to the outside world, it's badass. And then you start getting old where I am now. And then you realize how badass it was. And you wish you would have taken more advantage of the small things. And when you really look at where we are uh, as riders if you make it to this premier class and and put on a show for this crowd like you are you have accomplished more than most people ever will or ever dreamed of doing so for me it's 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 just now getting set in like used to when i did these interviews i would talk about how cool it was but it wasn't that cool like it was like just life and i knew that people thought it was cool but now it genuinely is like man now i've got a kid now i'm looking at, at how cool would it be if he made it to this level? I'm already looking at, he doesn't even, he's hardly riding a strider and I'm already thinking this. So um, yeah, it's it, it, like, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's really, really awesome to be where we are in the sport and uh, you know, be a, a, what I would call a household name within the sport. Obviously you, you don't walk through a Walmart and see somebody every day, but within this sport, becoming a household name is, is pretty cool. Oh, stop it. He walks through Walmart and gets recognized. I have no doubt. <laughs> if I get recognized in a Bucky, Stu Baylor gets recognized at a Walmart. Well, I don't know. Bucky's is our people. That's man. true. That's yeah. true. We need we need a Bucky sponsorship. <laughs> yes, we, we do. About this. Not we, the series. The series, yeah, needs a for Bucky sure. Sponsor. Everybody, Bucky's, if you're listening, everybody's traveling down the road. They all want to buy your beaver nuggets and <laughs> beef jerky. And uh, I will say you need to step up your game on your coffee. But that's enough that's, about that. Yeah, I agree. Man, it's uh, it's. We, we hear the thunder, but we're starting to see some rays of sunshine uh, starting to peek their way through here, Brock. And we appreciate you joining us in the booth today, giving us a little lowdown on, uh, on things, bringing some friends from uh, elsewhere in the industry. And uh, we always appreciate you having you here and your insight. And uh, sounds like you might be joining us again in a, in a week or so. I'll be definitely at the next one at the General, and I uh, haven't been to that event, and I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully Mother Nature here, it has letting up a little bit here, but it's sloppy, and we're going to got about an hour left in this race. And I can't wait to watch it on my app as I head to the airport and, and uh, listen to you guys all the way. Well, again, thanks, thanks for, for joining us. We'll see always. you next week. And uh, Johnny Gerard checking through on screen. Look at that, Mikey Waynes. He's got the lead. And a he's, little gap. He's got a little gap. He did not have goggles on that time. So here we see Stu There's Baylor Stu. now also no goggles. Uh, so this is where the rain is really starting to take its toll on the vision. And these guys are having to uh, work their way towards the pro pits where they can hopefully get some fresh goggles and uh, get 
a little bit of protection for those eyes. Zach Heron jumping back in here in the booth with us. Zach, you got to see that uh, that storm out there. You saw it on screen, folks, but it was hard to explain just how big those raindrops were and just how hard it was raining. This is some upside down rain. I'm talking Forrest Gump style. They have got everything. It's the <laughs> biggest raindrops that you've ever seen, though, and that's the that's the point. You've got kind of the misty rain where it just starts to collect on the lens. This is like almost like getting hit it, hit with a small rock, if you will. It's going to probably knock into your lens. It might even knock your goggles a little out of place. And so it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Like Brock said, it's lightened up a lot, but there for a good five plus minutes, it was pouring. And so uh, like you think you guys hit the nail on the head. It's going to be curious to see how they adapt over this next little bit and to see what the pit strategy is now. We thought we had it figured out, but uh, Mother Nature got to hit us with a curveball. Yeah, absolutely. And they, these guys uh, might not need, well, actually, this would be four laps complete when they come through, so they would be stopping for fuel anyway. So they're going to go ahead and obviously stop, get some uh, fuel. While they're in there, I'm sure you're going to see these guys put on some fresh goggles because nobody wants to be out there. Uh, yeah, okay, we are being told six laps confirmed, meaning that this lap we should see a two-lap board. Uh, and we will be counting down the laps, and I'm sure these guys right now to the point where they're counting down the miles. Uh, checking out our running order on screen there, I would like to point out, wasn't Nick DeFeo we saw on screen, but 14th overall for T-Rex wow. from the 250A class. So it might not have been him on screen, but nonetheless, uh, he is charging up through the ranks. Uh, he is our top 250A rider and the only 250A rider, only amateur rider in the top 20 overall as they run on screen. Johnny Gerrard in, see the rain still coming down crew kind of communicating with him taking his time looking like he took some uh, towels on the grips there and we'll see if we can get the shot of Stu Baylor when he comes in and here it is folks he's you know it's so interesting Johnny like the the pits Thad Duvall out there with some words of encouragement lengthy pit stop for Stu but that's what I was going to say Johnny Gerrard's was a little lengthy as well yeah, it's almost like in these conditions everything slows down breathe let's wipe the handle uh, the uh, yep. the grips off let's wipe the gloves off let's take our time with this and bring it home go it slow to go fast right? yeah in conditions like this losing a couple seconds in the pits unless you're going to lose multiple positions you want to take your time exactly you want to make sure you get those goggles on get them on straight you want maybe even wipe the face before you put the fresh goggles on clean the grips get some towels don't often anymore see guys changing gr gloves. It's quicker just to wipe the grips, wipe the hands, and go with the old gloves. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's well worth a couple extra seconds for the extra comfort and the extra peace of mind, maybe even some additional uh, information traded between the team and the rider. Uh, and you can see the other thing that, that was, you know, we were talking about a little bit a moment ago. We saw these big holes. We see these big ruts. Now they're all full of water. The yeah. ones that weren't already are now full of water. There's not a low spot on this property that does not have standing water so these guys are going to be having to keep an eye out for all that now as well it's going to be a gnarly last couple of laps here and i'm going to guess lap times are going to slow down pretty significantly leaders do in here now in under a minute we expect that to be johnny gerrard followed by Stu. going to be interesting to see what that gap is between them after the two lengthy pit stops i, I would like to point out we we did get word from our producer adam gordon we're confirmed for a six lap race that however, is, that is however, this, yeah. based upon the fact of the speed they were going, and they probably are going to try to stick with that plan, yeah. but if things slow down, if the track gets bad enough, if the pace slows down enough, they reserve the right. Those are courtesy. The yep. two-lap board, even the white flag sure. is a courtesy. They can throw the checkered at any time if we get to that point in the race where the rules say so or if the promoter discretion is hey this track's not going to last we're not going to be able to get these guys around here we need to call this i don't think we'll run into that today but just keep that in the back of your mind folks we believe we're going to see uh two more laps of racing when they come through and get what should be two more laps to go but it could be less a lot to anticipate on screen there he goes, Johnny Gerrard leading the way. Nice little gap back to Stu as our camera pans back. And we look for the 514 machine. And there he is. Nope. One, no, that's not him. Nope. Saw the camel back. There's Stu. Yep. So looking like about 18 ish seconds with a couple of lappers in between. Oh, here we see on screen Jordan Ashburn, uh, our fourth place as they were running. We know Grant Baylor had displaced him and taken away the third place. Jordan opting for the roll-off uh, goggles rather than the tear-offs that 
you'll run in good conditions. There's, you want as many pulls and as many chances at clear vision as you can get in conditions like this. So just like that, he's back off and rolling as we wait right here by the finish line for the 969 machine. And speaking of the pace slowing down, they're now a minute late compared to what they were, which we also had the pit stop in there yeah. as well. Pit stop, but I'm, I'm telling you, the, the, with conditions like this, the pace is going to slow down significantly. Mm -hmm. We're not talking 15, 20 seconds a lap. We're going to see, I'm going to say two plus minutes a lap slower than what they were running in good conditions. Uh, and unless, well, things to consider, <laughs> if they have to make track changes and cut sections out, that could actually, you know, potentially decrease the lap time. Uh, but it looks like that bike is going pretty rapidly and it is the 969 of Johnny Girar. You can see steam coming off that machine, but he's not worried about it. Two lap card in hand for Ricky Towery. Johnny Girar now knows he needs to circumnavigate this wild boar Palaka facility two more times, standing between him and potentially winning the first two rounds of 2024. Already got the job done two weeks ago at Big Buck, leading the way here at round two. 18 seconds was the gap when, uh, when they had, oh, it's less. Stu Baylor has made up some time there. 17.9. Oh, oh that, that went quicker than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So he's made up some time, about a tenth He of a did. You, know, you weren't wrong. It, he looked closer. And that's what's, you know, it's the stopwatch can be deceiving. Yes. It tells you the facts, but sometimes what your eyes see it appears to be a lot closer. <laughs> I was guessing it was less than 10 seconds, just how quickly it seemed like Stu popped up there on screen. Now, I've got to ask, we talk about how difficult the rain is going to make this, but is there a chance that it could help in any situation? We talk about when the, the soil starts to dry out. In some of these spots, they've dug down to where it's not quite as saturated soil, but now, obviously, everything's going to be underwater. Is there the ability to just, kind of like you had said before, push in a diagonal motion across these ruts and maybe just create a straight line in the, in the slosh, if you will? I like where your head's at, and the answer is no. Hey, that, that's a motocross <laughs> racer right no, there no, for no. you, folks. No, no, no. I'm not about that. Nothing about this rain is making anything better or easier. Uh, it's just making the cream rise to the top. The best of the best. I mean, Stu Baylor is phenomenal at finding lines and, and keeping himself out of trouble. Johnny Girard obviously did exactly that two weeks ago. Um, it's These conditions are just tough, man. I mean, you, you can't say enough about it. Um, everything becomes everything from twisting the throttle to pulling the clutch in. Everything becomes harder. You're sliding on the seat. You know, you it it's it just it's so challenging um the only thing that become I, I i will say this physically this race probably just got a little bit easier uh the temperatures went down uh, just a tick and also the pace is going to come down so much it becomes equally as much a thinking man's race as it is about speed it's about you know taking your time don't bury it don't let yourself get stuck behind a lapper so the intensity for sure comes down i think physically the race becomes easier mentally it becomes exponentially harder so no good news that's what yeah, you're i was about to say that doesn't <laughs> no good good not i mean it depends yeah. i mean well let's say let's say there was a guy that was on the line uh, not i don't i'm not saying it's one of our top riders maybe it is maybe it isn't on the line did he have enough you know to get to the finish physically now that's out of the that's no longer it's not about conditioning anymore as much as it is about physical strength you need to be strong not this isn't about endurance this is about strength and thinking you know if your bike does get stuck or start to get sucked you need the strength to physically pull it push it get it out of the rut and then you need to think to not put yourself in that position the first time and that was an arm that just came across i think, I think that I might like have been it. matt's <laughs> the camera operator making sure things stay dry by the way we are still waiting on uh, on third place to check in no there it is grant baylor finally checks in not the six-minute gap we saw yesterday on the ATV side, but still pretty significant. Two minutes, seven seconds. There is Stu Baylor on screen. Johnny Girard did just leave that camera shot. We'd have to have Adam go back, but I, I think it's a little closer than that uh, 18 seconds. Uh, he's going to run back, run back the tape. Jordan Ashburn, Ashburn now coming in, so that should be fourth. Yeah, correct. No one has uh, Jordan, so Jordan Ashburn checks in. Grant Davis is checked in. Grant out of the XC2 class now in fourth in the overall on the just the time. Well, and let me tell you, so we know it's about a minute in between, but it was a minute two back to uh, Jordan Ashburn and Grant just behind him. So he's still not far out of that podium position, but Grant has been able to put down a faster pace here. And uh, looking like, refresh, was that Josh Toth that possibly just checked in? No. Yes. No, Lyndon Snodgrass. Yeah. Snodgrass checking in 23 seconds behind, so that is 
your fifth place in XC1 and sixth place in the overall. So a, a great ride for Linden, a rider out of Australia. Uh, had a, was our XC2 champion in 2022. Rough season last year. Closed out the season a little bit. Oh, look at this. We got riders stuck in the finish line. That is never a good sign. Oh, Barry and her. He makes it out. And good gets job. <laughs> that little wheelie, little, little, uh, little pizzazz for the crowd there. But yeah, Lennon Snodgrass, great ride for him. Top five in our XC1 class and sixth place in the overall as they run. Yeah, slowing the pace down for sure. Just those six guys checked in. That's it. Waiting on the rest of the pack. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like uh, the rain going to stick around for a little bit longer. It's a, it's a little consistent, uh, not quite as hard as we saw earlier, but one thing is for sure is this racing is going to come all the way down to the wire. Who's going to grab the overall podium? Will we see an XC2 rider jump up on there? We've got a little bit left before we find out. We're going to get word from our sponsors, and we'll be back. This is the Moose Racing Wild Boar GNCC. Kenda Tires, delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles, automotive, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, bicycles, trailers, lawn and garden, and even golf. Trust Kenda Tires to guide you on your next adventure. Kenda, designed for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Cometic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Cometic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Cometic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Cometic. Cometic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. I'm seven-time GNCC champion Walker Fowler, and I run GBC. Second. Like a bullet into the first turn, the number one with the pink helmet and pink bars. It is Walker Fowler, the seventh. should be proud of yourself, Devin Feehan. What a ride today. I'm Devin Feehan, and I run GBC. I'm Josh Merritt, and I run GBC. I'm Chris Borch, and I run, and I run, I run GBC. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready.
And welcome back, GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. How about that drone shot? That is done by the Ian Howes. Pretty cool little stuff right there. And uh, <laughs> good news. Sun is out. Sun, so sun is peeking out on one side of the track and on the other side of the track at the FMF PowerPoint, as you can see by the little pond that has developed that is full of alligators. Uh, no, it is raining. not. Stop no, it. Not. I was just trying to add some excitement. Buddy, we've got <laughs> rain. We've got a race. I know. We've got enough excitement. We don't we've, need any gators. Yeah, we've had all of the elements today. We've had earth, wind, and fire. We're like a, we're like a line away from a Florida man. Uh, we also had Stasic Racing last night. I think we're going to take a look at some of those highlights. The Stasic Race, not a points race. It's a fun race that the kids can just come out and participate in. But my goodness, don't tell these kids it's not a race for points. It's the real deal with Ricky Towery. Uh, Griff does a fantastic job as well as DJ Judd with these guys. Look at that. The man is so methodical. I've said it before, Ricky Towery, hardest working man in GNCC. And I know from an outside perspective. Wait, did perspective, we have a split start? I think so. Did you see that? Yeah. That is phenomenal. They Isn't are really cool? stepping up the game. It's, we're stepping up the game here. Yes. That's cool, Griff. I like it. Love it. Good idea. Ingenuity, baby. Look at the kids. They're looking around. They got their heads on a swivel. That's okay. They're still young whippersnappers. future GNCC champions for sure no question we're gonna yeah it's not gonna be long we'll look back on footage of like when these Stasic races started and we'll be talking about some XC1 champ that had pigtails like that racing <laughs> the Stasic race and I, I gotta tell you guys you know uh, we talk about a GNCC really is a family sport and we mean that that's not a uh, that's not part of our marketing deck uh, you know, I can say that because I grew up here in yeah. GNCC racing. Uh, the little girl you just saw on screen, there she is again, Collins Russell. Her, uh, she was absolutely ripping. She was ripping, but let me tell you something. No breaks. Parents at home, <laughs> if you're listening, if you want to see your child grow up to be a champion, sure, bring them to GNCC <laughs> racing. But if you want to see your child interact, grow, become a better human, uh, and, and learn life lessons. Collins, uh, and I don't think anybody would be mad about me saying this, not a people person. Right. Like, she <laughs> kind of shies away from human contact, uh, except for her very close-knit group. Yesterday, after she won, I saw her going up to people oh. and showing off her medal, so, winning, and said, and I said, Collins, did you win your race? She had a full-blown conversation with me. That's the first time that's happened ever. So she's ever. just like, like Dad. <laughs> yes, but that, that, that's not where I'm going with no, that, Mikey. No, I understand. The fact that, you know, racing truly can, it can build bonds, yeah. it can build bridges. It can, it can teach you about, you know, yourself, and, and it's so cool to see at such a young age the passion that yep. these kids have for racing, for competition, for camaraderie, and uh, it was really, it was heartwarming to see yeah, last night. I tried to make cool. it to all the Stasic races last night. Uh, you know, obviously we had Supercross, so I was like, on one hand, kept looking at my phone because it goes a while, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, classes for yep. the Stasic races. I mean, we have them for, you know, six months old. No, I'm kidding. But we have them for all different <laughs> age groups. And uh, what I just said, you know what? I'll take a shower after the heats. There you go. You know, I, I just, I got to see this because the kids, they're just glowing. Yep. They love having the spectators. You lean over the sides, you clap for them, and, and it's just an awesome experience for sure. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Matter of fact, Crew Russell, he would ghost me on the podium. And then last year, he finally started showing up. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm now off the podiums, and now you're showing up. And he's like, shrugged his shoulders, sorry. It is what it is, Mikey. You see him growing a little human. It's pretty oh, cool. Oh, man. Yeah, it's funny. It's cool stuff. Watching the FMF PowerPoint. We call it Hollyland uh, product placement. Kidding. Four laps completed. Waiting on uh, leaders. Waiting on more riders to check through, but we'll get some shots of those leaders as well. Johnny Girard leading the way. Stu Baylor in the two spot. Grant Baylor. How about it? Let's talk a little bit about Grant and Stu. You know, we, we talk so much about Stu because Stu is the loud, the big personality, right? He's like the people's champ. Grant Baylor, very opposite. Very quiet, kind of sticks to himself, does his own thing. And not so quietly, he has been pretty sensational these first two rounds. Absolutely. Um, I actually think uh, him being on the podium two races in a row is something that we haven't seen in a long time, I if ever at all. I that. And I can say factually that never the first two rounds of the season. Sure. Uh, Grant's a rider that seems to kind of gain momentum as the series gains, you know, gets further into 
into its maturity throughout the season. It's one of those things where, like, it seems like he rides himself into shape, rides his confidence in, uh, and this year he's just coming out and been a terror, you know, fastest guy on the track the last couple laps at uh, Big Buck, and now, you know, I don't know, lap time-wise, kind of hard to say with these conditions, but uh, it might be difficult for him. He'd have to make up about two minutes uh, on his on his big brother to, to get himself into a battle for the win, uh, but that's and, and also Johnny Girard. But not to say it's off the table, but even still, if he ends up on the podium today, back-to-back -to -back podiums, you know, he's going to be grinning ear to ear, and that's one happy grizzly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very, very well earned. I think that may have just been potentially Johnny Girard. It is. Johnny Girard on screen, the 969. Factory FMF Red Bull KTM rider looking like he uh, possibly may have taken a water bottle there and uh sunshine there's rain in the water but sunshine That's in the it. sky so we got a contradiction on screen here where is where's, the 514 Stu? of Stu baylor what is the gap well pretty big it's certainly no longer well I, yeah it's, we're no, probably it's more over than that. 18 seconds there we're he is over that now for sure yeah, we're going to be upwards We'll have Adam Gordon, our producer, go back and clock this, but I'm thinking we're closer to, if not 30. exceeding, 30 seconds at this point. So there goes Stu through the FMF PowerPoint in that number two spot and seeing some pretty good separation between those two guys. He's on rails, though. He looks good. Yeah, he's pushing. Yeah. Right, conditions doing, doing well. appear to be improving. Again, we've got that, uh, that little lake right there next to the FMF banner, but... Uh, 35. Our producer Adam Gordon lets us know. Watch the replay. He said 35 seconds is the gap between Johnny Girard and Sue Baylor in that two spot. So it's basically doubled in six miles. Uh, but I think we're going to see so many factors coming into play here. I mean, again, lap riders, uh, all the rain that we've had, standing water everywhere. You know, those drone shots that we had where they were kind of working their way through and wheeling across that water, that becomes that much sketchier now because we've had more rain, the water's deeper, the puddles are bigger. A lot of it looks so different than when these yeah. guys pedaled the course just a day ago or this morning. Yeah, for sure this morning. Yeah, talking to trail boss Ryan Eccles uh, before the morning race, I said, how's it going? You know, and you can always tell by Ryan's body language exactly what the answer is. He said, Mike, I think we're going to pull a lot of people out today. It's just it's gnarly. This, this track's just something else. And you can speak to it, Johnny. It seems like there is just no bottom to this place. It just keeps going. Keeps yeah, it, well, there it, there is no bottom. I mean, Nothing. You keep digging, eventually it, you're the in the ocean. ocean. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's The water table is just, like I said earlier in the show, just a few inches behind, beneath the ground in some places. And uh, some places here, you know, we're at, I don't know, but I'm, I'm guessing less than 10 Yep, uh, less than 10 feet above sea level. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to go very deep to find standing water. Uh, and like I said, when you dig down with a dirt bike tire, an ATV tire, uh, even your hand, you could, you could find water below the ground. The water table very high this time of year, especially this year. Um, it's, <laughs> it's making for challenging conditions. There is Johnny Girard over at the FMF PowerPoint. Now one mile further ahead on the race course. Uh, 35 seconds was the gap from what we were told by our producer, Adam Gordon. That is how much of a lead he has on Stu Baylor. And uh, Stu Baylor going to be looking to chip away at that. Johnny Girard going to be looking to keep that, if not extend it a little more. Uh, kind of where he was at much of the race in uh, South Carolina two weeks ago. Kind of got to that 35-40 second gap. Here is Stu Baylor. So now, Johnny, with the sun coming back out, the rain letting up, obviously the track itself the damage is done it's there is that pit strategy still in play where it's like hey i want to check in every time maybe fresh set of goggles or now is it let's go back to business no i don't think they're gonna um get goggles unless they run out of film and the roll-offs uh, there wouldn't be a reason to uh, with it not raining um it, although we we're still seeing drops on camera there so yeah maybe what yeah, anytime it's, it's raining, raining the harder it <laughs> rains uh, yeah it's we're we're, wild well, we're, at. we're we're looking out the back of the racer tv studios and uh it's absolutely sunshiny no rain here you can see the sun peeking through but there are still raindrops falling uh again it just comes down to vision I, when those lenses get clogged up with rain and, and grit you've got to change them out if you don't have tear offs if you don't have roll offs you're, and, and and there you go there's uh, the oh. swamp thing that is pro row right With now. With a rainbow right over the top of it. Rainbow over the top and a swamp in the middle. What a shot. 
man. The cleanup this week. We go racing again in oh. seven days. I feel for everybody. We get we get a little bit of that. The Racer TV crew heads to Daytona, which, by the way, while we wait on everybody, we got Ricky Carmichael's Amateur Supercross. Uh, we've got Vintage, and we've got ATBSX on Tuesday uh, heading down to Daytona after this. So be sure to tune in. you got four days, four solid days of racing. Then we take a few days off and down to Georgia. So action-packed week. Watching that monster mile, mile marker number seven. Don't know if it's possible at our FMF PowerPoint on the other side there. Grant Baylor likely has come by uh, by now. Possibly Grant Davis as well, the leader in XC2. Jordan Ashburn, Lyndon Snodgrass, fifth place there in that XC1 class six overall. Josh Toth continuing to hold on to that number two spot in the XC2 class. Liam Draper now up to third, and Angus Riordan in fourth in that XC2 class. So we got four XC2 riders in the top 10 overall. Josh Strang would be sixth in XC1 and rounding out the top 10 overall on that factory Sherco. A couple spots higher than he was two weeks ago. Uh, a lot of talk about that new team, that new machine. Uh, Strang putting her solidly, at least for now, inside the top 10. Uh, Nick DeFeo moved up two more spots now to 12th in the overall. The big drop back last lap that we noticed, Ricky Russell. And here we see Grant Baylor on screen and a whole lot of steam. Was it steam or was it smoke? It looked like it was just steam. Did you? No, that is smoke. A lot of smoke coming out of the oh, 314. You're you absolutely right. Babbitt's online Monster Energy Kawasaki coming out of what appears to be the vent line. Uh, smoking very, very badly under acceleration. Uh, we'll see if they can get that machine cooled down, but uh, not looking promising with uh, still about a lap and five miles oh boy. remaining. Hopefully he can nurse that machine to the finish line. What is we, it they say? Uh, you're fine if it's smoking. Yeah, Once it no, stops, 100%. now we're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, you never want to see smoke coming out of your machine, right. but these, these mechanics and these riders know them well. I'm sure they'll check in, and, and if they feel there's anything they can do to alleviate whatever it is that's causing it to run hot or whatever the issue is, they'll work on it. If not, and they're confident, they'll say, hey, buddy, hammer down. You're in a podium position. Let's go get that podium. You're good to go. Now, he does have the benefit He's got a minute gap back to Jordan Ashburn, so he's got some time in there. And there is Jordan did. Ashburn, like you. No, that's probably been probably about a minute. About okay. a minute. Uh, so Ashburn there on the number three, Coastal Racing, Gas Gas, uh, now in the fourth spot physically and was fifth place in the OA. Uh, don't know if we'll get a shot of Grant Davis on screen or not. There he no, yes, no, <laughs> not sure. Fair enough. I, I would same view. So anticipating uh, Grant Baylor to come into the pits, maybe an extended pit stop. Again, that one minute gap back to Jordan Ashburn. Uh, but you got Grant Davis in there, like you were saying, out of that XC2 on the adjusted time. Now you got to think, does that put Grant Davis in that position for the podium? Yeah, I don't if know. If Grant has that extended Oh, Lennon Snodgrass, so he's putting in a push. Now, we know he was in fifth, but I think he's a little closer than he was, so not too far behind Ashburn, potentially looking to throw himself into this, what could be a three-rider battle over this final podium position. So, again, a great ride today for the 178 machine. Lennon Snodgrass on that Babbitts Online Monster Energy Kawasaki chasing after his teammate, uh, Grant Baylor, and also in between Jordan Ashburn on the Coastal Racing Gas Gas. So that is your third, fourth, and fifth place positions in that XC1 Pro class. Uh, don't, again, still don't know if we did or did not miss Grant Davis in that shot, uh, but last we knew he was leading the way in that XC2 Pro Lights and, and first, sorry, first in the XC2 Pro Lights and third, fourth, count, Johnny, read the screen, <laughs> fourth good. in the overall. What a, what a crazy race. We've had a little bit of everything thrown at us here. We talk about how gnarly Palatka is, and then we'll just throw a monsoon in the middle of the race for you as well. Yeah, we've seen it before, unfortunately, yep. and uh, it just really does add an additional level of difficulty to everything. Yeah. But we make the most of it. These guys are out there having a blast. A lot of these folks uh, will travel home, work a couple days, get to do it all again just in about seven days. Seven days for these guys, six more yep. days until the ATVs take the course in Washington, Georgia for round three of the 2024 GNCC series. And and, and that is a fact. Uh, there was the, the annual rumor mill was floating yep. around of, oh, we're racing in Palatka again next week. And uh, I kind of laughed about it. And then it really took off. And to the point that Griff Cotter comes up to me at the start for the AM race and says, 
Mikey, will you please announce that we are 100% racing in Georgia next week so we can squash that rumor mill. I don't know if TMZ ran that or what, but uh, yeah, we're racing in Georgia. Yeah, factually, <laughs> it's been in Georgia. The boss has decided the race will go on just as scheduled. Yeah. So everybody be there, be there, be square. Uh, Josh Strang on screen. The number seven factory Shirko we just talking about him rounding out the top ten overall. Jackson Burrell on camera there momentarily. You getting uh, ready. So I'm going to have to speculate that Grant Davis did come through unless he experienced an issue. Uh, we don't know where he's, that's going to slate him in in the overall positions. Because uh, there is Angus. That was Angus Riordan. Pretty sure. Looked like him. And that Witkowski possibly. I think so. Yep. So did we miss Toth and Draper? Didn't see them on screen. They may have come through when we were talking about the uh, the weather conditions. Mile marker seven, monster mile, just waiting. I mean, what can you do? Just waiting on riders to rip through. Trying to get some confirmation on that. We uh, we know that leading the way, it was still Johnny Girard. Second place mm -hmm. was still Stu Baylor. Grant Baylor in third. The question was, we're not sure if we saw Grant Davis or not, but we know Jordan Ashburn, Lyndon Snodgrass did check through. So your top five in the XC1 class have checked through here at the seven-mile marker. Josh Strang, some others have come through as well now. Mike Lukowski. Uh, look at this, another rainbow. Things are really starting to brighten up here. The sun's coming out. We're going to get to finish this one, it looks like, under sunny skies. Two hours, 20 minutes in with four laps complete. When they come through here in a matter of just a couple of minutes, we'll see a white flag waving. And I think we're going to see some relief from yeah. some of these guys because this has been a tough, tough day here, boys. Yeah, it's, it's been grueling on these guys. So, yeah, that, that white flag is going to be welcomed with open arms. Dropping over to the 11-mile marker. And you can see it's it's so funny. You, normally you see the riders, and they're relatively headed towards you in a straight line. And nowadays it's just zigzagging. That's pretty much every single line is, is weaving back and forth through these trees. You can see we've been watching that stump all weekend long. Mikey and I both oh, it was scaring us yesterday. Me to death yes, yesterday on the ATV side. And they are coming at it a whole lot differently today than yes. they were yesterday. Yeah, it's what happens is you can see like the main line there. I guess kind of center left of screen. You can see how deep that hole is. You can see the standing water now in it. It's just gotten to the point where they don't want to take that pounding anymore and go through that. Plus, it's probably so soft in the bottom. It just kind of sucks away all your momentum. You just can't get any drive out of there. Johnny Gerrard on screen, 11-mile marker, no goggles. So that speaks to the condition still challenging for the vision, having to pitch away the goggles that he did have on. I assume we will see him stop and get some fresh vision when he rolls through the uh, the GBC tires pit stop area here in a matter of just a few minutes. 11 miles down, about a mile and a half to go, and we will see a white flag waving. Two hours, 30 minutes into this one, looking like it is going to go the full duration and then some. Uh, if that is, in fact, a white flag waving, which we believe it will be, this race will end up being over three hours long by yep. the time they get to completion. Yeah, running uh, yeah 32-minute lap time for Johnny Girard. And don't anticipate those guys wicking it up any bit on that last lap. Now, especially not now with this gap really continuing to grow. Here is Stu Baylor on screen. Looking like he's still charging, but uh, I, uh, Adam, you want to go back and run the numbers, see what that was? I, no, you're all good. Uh, we, we don't, I wasn't keeping track. We'll see exactly what the gap was, but I think we're approaching getting close to a minute it was 35 seconds last we knew and it has definitely grown from there uh, we'll get the official confirmation here in just a matter of a few moments but man uh, seeming to be Johnny Gerard just having a little more pace than Stu Baylor at the moment at least these last couple miles Gerard trying to uh, stay perfect as well one uh, round one at Big Buck and maybe we don't get that uh the diversity and winners 49 seconds is what we're being told is the gap now so just under that minute mark 
And yeah, Mikey, that's a good point that you bring up. I was just about to say we had such a, a whole different scenario yeah. last year, right? All the different winners there in the first seven races now could be seeing the complete opposite side of it. Johnny Girard trying to go two for two out here, and that's uh, that's going to be a good feeling because he knows the depth of this field, right? He got to see it last year. Obviously, was one of those riders to grab a win, but uh, he's not going up against an injured field or anything like that. Everybody who's anybody is here, and he's now two for well, not now. He's one for sure. one and almost two for two. As uh, we still got another, he's working on it. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's getting there. He's a lot he's closer, ever closer than he was an hour ago. I'll put it the like that. White flag's gonna feel real good for all these guys. Uh, obviously, if you're there, you go. Johnny Jar had some fresh goggles on, so he made a uh, quick pit stop. Likely got some fresh goggles and possibly maybe wiped down the grips a little bit, uh, getting himself some better handle on that machine and off charging, trying to absolutely just. Cover ground as quickly as he can to stay ahead of Stu Baylor, who is charging as well. 49 seconds is the gap. We've seen these guys wheel to wheel. We've seen the kind of gap seesaw. Uh, it was 17.9 seconds at the completion of lap number four. Now coming with just about a mile to go before they complete lap number five. It has grown to 49 seconds. So advantage Girard on this lap. Will Stu Baylor have enough to come back after him? Can Johnny Girard stretch it out? Guys, we're going to find out. We're coming down to the nitty gritty. It's going to be a good one. You know Stu Baylor not going to be the kind of guy. This is not good. Stu Baylor off the bike. Bike on a stand. Not sure what. But he is putting goggles yep. back on. So He's going back out. I just can't see exactly what it is that they're doing to the machine. So this is really going to separate these guys between first and second here. But as you guys mentioned, he's still geared up. Now the gloves coming off. Is he just putting on a new pair of gloves? Uh, you can oh, see the sign the frustration. of frustration. He's wiping his hands. Oh, the tire rear wheel off. His wife Jade out there putting on, helping him with the fresh gloves. In Certainly still though, trying not, to get this thing back up and going. Not a not a disaster for Stu. No. I'm not sure what was going on there, but um, you know the fact that they're putting a different rear wheel on leads me to believe that he's going to be leaving here relatively soon. Uh, if that is the case, still will likely have second place, depending on how much right. longer this stop goes on, or at the very worst, be pretty close to his brother uh, Grant, um, and and potentially have a chance to fight for that final podium position or second and third between the two of them. Uh, but this right now to me looks to be an opportunity to win absolutely slipping away. Yep. Uh, can't can't get these trophies away before the checkered flag waves, but with 49 seconds, uh, we're going to see a gap of upwards of probably two minutes plus by the time he makes it to the finish line. Uh, we may see more than that because it doesn't appear that they are finishing up the work just yet. And don't forget, guys, we did see Grant Baylor smoking as well on his machine, so this could be an even bigger gap. Never short of emotion, Stu Baylor. No. Understandable, man. I got to tell For you guys sure. that uh, incredibly frustrating feeling. What you're, what he's seeing, what he's feeling is the opportunity to win. Gone at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know what though? I I'm gonna throw this out there. Obviously, Stu showing emotion. We've seen this last year. I think sure. at a Penton oh, last he's a, year. He's going out. He's and good. He's going back out. He's good. He's still second. And I think Grant just oh, might have okay. come by to go into his pit. So I, you may see him make a pass right here. There, there is Grant, go. I think. So but now, Stu trusting his 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 mechanics right yep. there, trusting yep. his crew, not jumping in. Um, obviously frustrated. HBO, we'd have to be on that, you know, to probably play what he was saying audibly. But nonetheless, a little move in the right direction for Stu of, hey, yeah. I'm going to trust my guys to get this job done. Well, not only that, I got a decent gap. Let me get back out there and get to work. Showing the composure, whatever yeah. was wrong with the machine to come in, get it, you know, instead of pushing it to the point where you're stranded out yeah. of the course, you know, to try to make the repairs, to, to salvage the points. And right now, after, you know, it looked like he momentarily lost second yeah. there, Grant passed him, but then Grant pitted. Uh, he was able to regain second. So those two will be right together in second and third. You know, of course, he's going to want to maximize points and, and, and he still wants to win this thing. Yeah. Uh, barring some kind of a miscue for Johnny on the last lap, probably a bit of a bridge too far across just on pure speed but there's a lot of obstacles out there you've got to keep moving you've got to yep. keep driving forward no part of me would be shocked to see Stu or grant win this race yep. if something goes sideways for johnny so you know instead of taking yourself putting yourself in a position where you gain no points you know he's right now sitting at 25 with an opportunity to still better himself and maybe still win this thing yeah and then you got to think too if they can get grant fixed up um hopefully they got him in and out as johnny gerard about to check in for the white flag there it is from Ricky Towery. 
White flag out for Johnny Girard, and now he is about, we'll call it 33, 34 minutes away from taking a checkers. But it's got to breathe life into Grant Baylor as well. If he can get in the pits, band-aid that machine, whatever they've got to do, because now he sees second is right there. Yep. There is Lyndon Snodgrass now in. Uh, that was fifth place in our XC1 class. Uh, this will be great because we'll finally get an update on the transponders and we'll know exactly where Grant Davis, uh, Josh Toth, potentially Liam Draper, all these guys slot in. A lot of speculation based off what we see, but you know the official live timing and scoring is what decides uh, these positions at the end of the race. We're going to be waiting here a bit on this camera shot. Uh, we think it's going to be upwards of two minutes. It was 49 seconds at our last camera shot and Stu Baylor having a very, very extended pit stop. Don't know if we can get an update from the, the crew down there of exactly what happened, but we do know that he did change the rear wheel. We saw a rear wheel go kind of flying out of camera, not flying, cut, roll out of camera shot, and then uh, a fresh one put on. But uh, it, we're not exactly sure what the cause of that was, why they decided to make that change. Now at the one mile marker, we're waiting for the 969 of Johnny Girard, your leader already having run, won round one. I mean, you couldn't really script the better start to the season than this. What a turnaround from 365 days ago. Uh, Johnny, in his own words, round one, 2023, gets the whole shot and dices his way to the back of the pack. Yeah. That's how he put it. Comes here to Florida, running second all day to his teammate, Ben Kelly. Uh, you know, they're pretty well checked out and gone from the rest of the field. Johnny just hits a wall, literally loses the ability to function as a human due to severe... Yeah you know, dehydration and exhaustion. And uh, I'd have to look back, but I don't think he scored any points at all. I don't think all. so. Uh, and, and at round one, I believe the same. So, you know, not a position you want to put yourself in, but hey, you learn from your mistakes. You come out one year, calendar year later, this is a completely, at least that we've seen so far, yeah. completely different Johnny Girard. A commanding win at round one, has been in the fight all day for this one, starting to stretch it away just a little bit. And then with obviously the miscue or the mechanical for Stu, now that 49 second gap turning into a really big gap. We don't know exactly yet, but we'll find out here soon. Yeah, and Johnny Girard has always been that kind of like cool, calm, collected guy. Nothing really phases him. And in the uh, the pre-race or Monster Energy pre-race report, I'd asked him about, we always talk about the weight of a number one plate or the weight of a reverse plate. And I hadn't seen the bike yet, because some guys, they won't, I mean, Walker Fowler's a guy that would yeah. never run that reverse plate. Chris Borch would Chris do Borch, it. Um, but I said, are you running the reverse place? Oh, yeah. I was like, do you feel the weight of that? Is that any added pressure in, in true Girard fashion? No, not at all. But there he is. Still pounding the whoops. Two hours, 40 minutes into this thing. Obviously showing the fitness not an issue for the wheel tapping his way through there. Yeah, that's and uh, at this point, if uh, if you're his crew, you got to be getting that board out there. Let him know what that gap is because homeboy's on a mission. He's yeah. trying to stretch this thing out even more. He's looking good, feeling good. Maybe they're just saying, let him go. He's let on go. one. Yeah. Let's see what Run he can it. do. Uh, Stu Baylor checked in. The gap now between first and second, two minutes, 43 seconds. And Grant Baylor has not checked in yet. There he is, 32 and a half seconds back from Stu. So Grant, uh, not a real long, significant pit stop, but a little longer than normal. Yep. Yeah, but still, obviously, a significantly faster lap time mm -hmm. due to Stu's very extended pit stop. So from... Basically lost a, just shy of two minutes, did Stu Baylor. He was at 49 seconds, dropped all the way to two minutes, 43 seconds. Uh, again, we don't have crystal balls. Uh, we can't see the finish of this race, but two minutes and 43 seconds with one lap to go. It is going to take a major, 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 major miscue for John yeah. Girard to give this race away. Stu Baylor, at this point, you almost have to think, just going to... Oh, Grant Davis now checked. Wait, whoa. Grant... Di no. We got Grant Davis is bouncing all around in the in the overall results, but he is up to third in the overall two minutes thirty. So he's twenty two seconds behind Stu Baylor, and about ten seconds ahead of Grant Baylor on corrected time. Third place in the overall, your XC two leader, Grant Davis, the nine twenty two machine on that Landers Racing KTM out of me shop in Pennsylvania. Man, Grant Davis is on rails today. Yeah, he's at, that's an impressive ride, uh, let alone in the class. Big lead for him there, but boy, what a statement he could make here today getting up on the box in the OA. Lyndon Snodgrass has checked in. He's back in fifth. Ashburn thought he checked in. I guess not. No, Snodgrass. That's it. So Johnny Girard 
10-4. Johnny Girard leading the way right now. Stu Baylor after an extended pit stop. I think Zach Heron is going to be heading down there to try and get a word in with him, as well as the Babbitt's online Monster Energy Kawasaki pits to find out exactly what was going on. Did they patch up Grant Baylor? What's going on with Stu? He's still securely in that two spot, but frustrated. Meanwhile, Johnny Girard, we saw him out there having fun as Johnny G said he's out there wheel tapping on lap one or lap uh, number six trying to bring it home more action in the end of this race at the wild boar GNCC coming up after this this is the moose racing wild boar GNCC you know when I take the bike out like this all my stresses just melt away I hear that this bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruise to sort you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yee! Oh, that is a vibrating pain. big world out there. How do you choose to see it? When you crave the long canyons, rocky trails, rutted tracks, and lonely highways, they become a part of you. Podiums and personal records, we choose it all. Because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. You just need to ride where you belong. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles. So you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. It has been a wild Wild Boar, GNCC. I know, that was low-hanging fruit. Uh, we are going to throw it down. I Put believe Zach Heron is down in the uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Red Bear Kawasaki pits with uh, Stu Baylor's mechanic, Blake, for a uh, so an update on uh, what was going on with Stu. Hey, guys. Yeah, thanks. I am. I'm down here in the pits. Blake, let's talk about it, man. Stu came in. Clearly something not going right. Take us through what happened and what the plan is here for this last little bit. Man, the Kawasaki just laying the power to the ground, son pulling the tire off the wheel. You know, uh, man, we had to do a little pit stop, quick tire change. Uh, Dunlop was hooking up really well to 14, and uh, 
man just hooking up too good and pulling off that uh off that wheel so we swapped the wheel out got him back out he dropped back to third for second but right back in the second chasing johnny g down there you go so things went wrong they got it fixed they got the rider back out on track all's going well to the finish here for rocky mountain red bear Johnny, I'll say it. Being Stu's mechanic is one of the toughest jobs in GNCC. Uh, I think he found his guy. Yeah. No, he seems enthusiastic about it. And, you know, again, you won't know until you go back, take a look at uh, at the aftermath of, of what happened there. But to have a tire come off the bead, you know, a lot of things that could go could go wrong there. Um, you know, but the, the important part in the moment, not only to figure out what happened moving forward, but to focus on, hey, whatever happened, we were dealt the delta deck of cards we played our hand and you know looking right now that Stu definitely still going to end up on the podium uh, solidly in that second place spot making the most of a bad situation and again the race is still running man you, you don't know what's going to happen uh but he they did exactly what they needed to do fix the issue got him back out on track as quick as they could and looking like he's in a, in a great position to earn some good points today yeah gonna be uh, not ideal not what he wanted he always wants to win but yeah like you said good good deal good deal uh hopefully hanging on to that two position what a difference a year makes we go back to here last year uh, and I think we've got actually some highlights maybe we can play uh, from last season, and you'll understand what I mean by the difference, specifically uh, the presence that was Ben Kelly, who is not racing with us here to start 2024. Now, starting last uh, a year ago here, way in the back there, you see, well, almost last, Josh Chang was behind him, looked like he had a little bit of a bad start. Uh, ben Elko got up front early, set a blistering pace, actually pulled away from these guys. Uh, and further back in the pack, there you see the 530 of Ben Kelly, the big man BK, uh, just kind of a little bit of extra confidence. We now know, and I think even then we knew he was riding on a broken leg, uh, but somehow just came out and was absolutely right from the rip on this one, just kind of laying it down, looking looking like he had the stuff to, to fight for the win. Miss Ben. Hope he's doing well. I don't know. Johnny, you'd know better than I do. Is he, is he watching? Is he keeping up? Or is he like, I got to keep to myself right now and focus on me and recovering? Uh, I haven't asked him if he's watching the races, but I do know that uh, we will see Ben back. Uh, uh, let me be very clear. Sure. In a spectating capacity here, supporting the brand, supporting the companies that have supported him so much after round four. Uh, okay. or may, he may have said starting with round four, I believe is what he said. Uh, he's going to be at the races. Um, he misses it. You know, it, it's, it's obviously been a, uh, a tough... A tough pill to swallow, but yeah. uh, doing the right things, getting himself healthy. And his own Instagram post said, you know, I want to come back, but I want to be healthy and ready to fight. Yeah, it's uh, a lot to be said about we see it GNCC. We see it Supercross, Promoto, uh, where guys maybe come back a little too soon. I think Ben Kelly doing the right thing. Heal up, do it right, so we can see him doing things like this, taking checkered flags and being the center man on the box. Yep. And he was joined on the podium by Stu Baylor and Craig DeLong, who ultimately ended up being the two championship combatants. Yeah. Uh, coming to the, Ben coming down to the final two rounds, but carrying it to the final round, it was just Stu Baylor and Craig DeLong with the uh, opportunity to win that championship. So those three on the podium ended yep. up being the three that took it down to the end for the championship fight. It's a fun season to watch. And as you can see, how about this? We've got the Yamaha Racing live drone. And as the drone returns, we have some more breaking news for you. Sounds and bad news. Yeah, not good news. Sounds like Grant Baylor uh, has taken that bike back to his pits. So maybe we can get Zach. Uh, Zach may still be down there, as a matter of fact, or uh, Jackson down there to uh, get the word from either Grant Baylor himself or the team. Uh, we saw that bike smoking, Johnny. Yeah, it was it was an aggressive smoking coming through at the FMF PowerPoint. Again, <clears throat> it's one of those things where sometimes steam from maybe a clogged radiator, you can kind of clean that out, but that was smoke. Yeah. Uh, again, we can't diagnose this from a from a, a camera shot, but it uh, didn't look good. Very hopeful that he could make it to the finish line. Still looked like he was in good shape when he worked his way through the uh, GBC tires pit stop area there. Was solidly in third place. We saw him about 32 seconds behind, yeah. 34 seconds behind his brother. Uh, and sorry, no, 32 seconds it was, and now we're told that machine has been retired for the day. Is back at the uh, Babbitt's Online Monster Energy Kawasaki Semi, uh, and I'm sure they're going to take a look at that, figure out what the issue was, move forward. But uh, had a great ride going, and would look to be pretty solidly likely a podium position today. Yeah, that's uh, that is a heartbreaker for for Grant. We were kind of singing his praises earlier about the hot start to the season. Uh, Keep your eye on him in, in Georgia. I got to think. Leonard Snodgrass 
will inherit that third place position in the XC1, not the overall because that belongs to Grant Davis. And, and what that also does is it look at the gap now back that Grant Davis will have in that third place over uh, fourth place in that overall. There is Johnny Girard on screen, the 969. Two minutes and 43 seconds was the gap when they checked in at the completion of lap number five after the struggles and the rear wheel swap for Stu Baylor. Uh, so yeah, going back to Grant Davis great position to be in hey guys i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in real quick i'm not sure we're gonna be able to get a camera on it but i do have grant baylor here with me grant obviously not the kind of update that we're wanting to give take us through what happened from your perspective oh man i really don't know um i was feeling really good out there making making some moves and uh gaining on the leaders there and uh yeah i started losing my front brakes about with about three laps to go in the race and uh then about two laps to go i started losing my clutch so uh, I got it through one more lap there with the clutch, and then just just past the finish there, the bike just let loose on me. Uh, so, man, I'm really bummed. Uh, I put in a hard charge there in the middle of the race. I saw the storm coming in. I, I, it was getting super dark, and I heard the thunder and lightning, and I put in a lot of passes and was made it made it up to third. And the lightning started hitting all around the track, and I was like, oh, surely they're going to call the race here. But no, nah, we had lightning hitting all around us, and we kept racing. And uh, yeah, it's just a bummer we couldn't make it through the finish, man. I, uh, you know, this isn't what this isn't what we put in all this work for. You know, it's, it sucks, man. I to get on the podium in the first round and then have another podium run running going here. Um, it's just a bummer, man. So we'll come back in the next round and get you know come out swinging and uh, hopefully come out on top of the box, man. We we have to make up some ground here. Tough luck there for Grant Baylor, but he's ready for the challenge. and ready to come out swinging at round three. Well, there you go. From his, his own words, Grant Baylor, <clears throat> definitely disappointed, but upbeat, looking forward already to round number three, uh, Some prop a property where he's had some success in the past uh, there at the Washington, Georgia. Uh... Hey, you on your pass? Yes, I can't remember the name of the race. but I it's wanted a... to say Bulldog, but that was yeah, when we'd go no, back. Uh, the General. The General. There yes. we go. Oh, man. We've had such an exhausting day of all the, the action on screen. My brain stopped working for a moment, but yeah. Uh, super big bummer for him. I mean, they, he was rotting so well. He's exactly right. Uh, charged his way up through the pack, solidly in third. Uh, you know, and then kind of getting a little bit of a breath of fresh air, a new breath of life with his brother having the issue with the, the rear wheel, having to do the swap, and suddenly he was momentarily in second, uh, left there in third. <clears throat> but it sounded like the uh, machine had been kind of getting worse and worse progressively as he was going. Mentioned the loss of the front brakes and then ultimately the clutch issues. Uh, Johnny Girard now big, big, big lead. Uh, out front, just clicking off the miles. Got about five miles to go until he will see a checkered flag and put the finishing touches. Hey, guys, I'm going to actually jump in one more time. We have some more bad news, unfortunately. This time, it's Liam Draper. Man, Liam, what are you doing? What's going on? Uh, yeah, just uh, mechanical with the bike. I'm not, we're not 100% sure yet. I think it just got a little too hot, and, uh, yeah, she's done. Man, we hate to hear it, guys. More bad luck down from the pits. Hopefully, these guys can hang on and get it through to the finish. There you go. A big bummer for him. Looking to defend that championship, obviously, and uh, not <clears throat> off to the start that, that he would like. Good good run at round number one yep. there in second place. Running up solidly in a podium position uh, earlier in the race today. Uh, but now we see him dropping off our leaderboard completely. And uh, we are obviously now aware that he is out of the race and will not be scoring any points in that XC2 championship battle today. Uh, the one good thing about having a bad race in Florida is you only got to wait seven days to do <laughs> it again. That's true. Yeah, you don't. Have, you, there's really no time to think about it. It's go, go start prepping for uh, for Georgia, and you know those guys that don't have a good race. Uh, those seconds feel like minutes, minutes, hours, days, weeks. So, good news. We're going racing next week. I'll tell you, the minutes are going to feel like hours, probably for this guy right <laughs> yes. here. The few he's, minutes of track that he's got left are going to feel like hours. <clears throat> you know, or maybe not. You know, Johnny's the type of guy. Maybe he's just out there singing songs. Probably. Uh, you know, thinking about what he's going to have for dinner tonight. But he has done it better than everybody else so far today. Uh, the winner at round one, looking closer and closer to being the winner here at round two. And what will be two wins in a row, 60 points, the max you can yep. earn in GNCC racing and two rounds of racing. And uh, we'll have to do the math when we finish as far as points. But uh, Stu Baylor, obviously, if he ends up 2-2, two -two, 50 points, so it'd be a 10-point lead. For Johnny Girard, uh, and now with Lyndon Snodgrass moving up into that uh, 
third place position, but we're thinking it will be Grant Baylor as they run, at least in the overall uh, things. Davis, yeah. Grant yeah. Davis, sorry. Grant Davis, Grant Baylor right back Grant at the semi. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Grant Davis uh, looking to step into what will be the first time we've seen an XC2 rider on the podium this season. Uh, and I don't know if we I don't think we saw that last year at all. Man, I I was trying to think of that earlier uh, when he popped in, and, and I don't recall. Zach would probably be the guy to ask. He's the podium guy. Uh, so those are his notes now. We, we've definitely seen it we, in yeah, the past, sure. but I don't think we had any last year where the XC2 battle worked its way quite that high up in the overall. Monster Mile, mile marker number seven. Johnny Gerard leading the way. Stu Baylor in second. Lyndon Snodgrass third. Oh, there is on cue Stu Baylor. 514 monster energy red bear racing machine still got goggles on knowing at this point i'm sure the gap uh still riding hard still charging but probably not going to take those extra risks knows he's got to go again in just seven days yep yeah settling into that pace now right at uh, about 12 and a half minutes at this point before we should see the checkered flag in it. So Johnny Gerard, Stu, Baylor, Grant Davis, Lyndon Snodgrass, Ashburn, Angus Riordan. He's having a good day, kind of quietly back there. He's in what would be sixth overall, straying inside the top 10. As they run, looks like Josh Toth still hanging out to third place in that XC2 class. That'd be a great ride for him to put it on the podium. Doing a little things different this year, riding a couple different brands. We talked about it a little bit at round one. He's out there on a Honda CRF 250, riding for the Enduro Engineering Squad, <clears throat> running all kinds of different racing, uh, kind of doing the Ryan Sipes thing, running the races that he wants to run, traveling around the country, running some Enduros, running some GNCCs, running some hard Enduros, uh, I think doing... Uh, uh, planning on doing some outdoor motocross yeah. nationals again like he did last year. Uh, so kind of a fun schedule for him. Definitely a lot more GNCCs on his schedule this year yeah. than there was in, the, in, in 2023. So uh, kind of coming home. He was a GNCC guy, obviously a former XC2 champion. Uh, several years with the factory KTM squad. Now riding for Enduro Engineering and, and solidly in a third place spot in that XC2 class. Love, love to see uh, him having fun on a dirt bike. I still think about when... Uh, Ryan Sipes told us he was going to do that, and I remember thinking in my head, this is never going to work. And now we refer to anybody who does that as, oh, they're doing the Ryan Sipes thing. That's how uh, kind of trailblazing that sort of uh, career path has become. Nick DeFeo up to 11th place in the overall with five laps T -Rex. complete. The uh, 258 rider putting in an absolutely blistering pace. Looks like second place in that 258 class, Jason Tino, 18th overall. So you got two 258 riders in the top, maybe three. I think uh, Palmer there in the number 22 and 20th. I believe he's a 258 guy as well. No, sorry, it shows he's running XC2. Yeah, my bad. Thought he was a 258 guy. So, uh, yeah, two two 258 riders inside the uh, the top 20, and uh, Nick DeFeo, 11th place overall, blistering pace right now. Always makes for an interesting race. Uh, you don't want to see mechanicals, uh, but, hey, it's the nature of the business that we're in. Uh, when you get conditions like this down in Florida and the rain coming in mid-race, uh, just how mixed up things get. And it really adds to what Walker Fowler was talking to me about uh, Friday before Big Buck of, you know, Mikey, we never really know what the season's going to look like until we're done with that third round in Georgia. And then by the time we get to round four, now it's starting to take shape. So, you take these first few rounds almost kind of with a grain of salt of it's not really quite telling the story of what the championship is going to look like as the season goes on. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's uh, you got to get far enough into the season. You got to run a bunch of different conditions, a bunch of different tracks. Every, a lot of guys on new teams, new bikes, yep. trying to figure out their settings, trying to figure out the new dynamics of the team. Uh, so, yeah, it all kind of comes together. Uh, you can't start off any better than two wins, though. And, oh, and yeah. Stu Baylor with two seconds, you know. If you can't win, you got to be second, yeah. you know, kind of that mentality. And uh, both those guys right now proving to be a little better than everybody else. Um, again, worth pointing out, Lyndon Snodgrass, third place in that XC1, uh, looking like he may end up missing that overall podium. Grant Davis has him by a couple minutes on corrected time. That said, still his first XC1 podium, a former XC2 champion uh, in his own right, uh, definitely will be a kind of a breakthrough day for him, I think, as well. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, 
Yeah, for Grant Davis in that XC2 class, this is going to be a huge, huge confidence boost for him. And looking down the running order, Josh Strang, you know, he'll be, yep. again, keeping in mind, everybody you're seeing down from uh, Grant Baylor will move up one spot. Right. Uh, because he is now, we know, out of the race. So that moves Snodgrass up to fourth, Ashburn up to fifth, Riordan to sixth, Strang up to seventh. So equaling his number from last year. Uh, you know, a lot of people weren't quite sure how that whole thing was going to work out with Sherco. Uh, you know, I felt a guy with his resume, a guy with his experience, you know, they'll be able to make that program and make that machine competitive. Won't be shocked to see that, that machine up on the podium at some point this year. Uh, and, you know, obviously a big step forward if he does finish up in that seventh place spot today or anywhere within the yeah. top ten, that's a step forward from where they started off two weeks ago. A yeah, very good point. Very good point. I love it, John. Your, your glass half full today. I, I'm a You're always glass person, half full. I shouldn't say today. Person. These, I know how hard these guys are working out there. I know yeah. how hard these teams are working behind the scenes. You know, it's easy to say, oh, well, you know, this guy got a fifth, and, you know, that's not awesome. Well, you know what? For the work that they put in and, and the sacrifices that they've made, their families made, you know, their teams have made, it's important for these guys to take something positive away from these races. Yeah, you got to be hard on yourself. Yeah. If you want to win, you got to figure out what held you back, what didn't allow you to put yourself in a position to win. But you also have to celebrate these small wins. Uh, Josh Merritt, a great example. You know, oh, very sure. hard on himself. Has yeah. had a good couple of races. Yesterday, he was like, man, I should have been on the podium. I said, Josh, you ever finished fourth in Florida before? No, no, I haven't. I said, you were right there for a podium yeah. on the last lap. I said, buddy, you're, uh, you know, you're sitting solidly in third place in the points yep. right now. So um, what are we complaining about? You, yeah, that's, that's a dream for you. Let's, let's move forward. So yeah, um, a, a lot of it's that just that outlook of, you know, you want to learn from your mistakes, but you also need to celebrate your small, your victories, no matter how small. Yeah. You know, you look at anywhere at this top 20, we talk about this all the time of, uh, as we're watching Stu going uh, to work. Probably. Yeah, I think it is yeah, Stu. That's Stu. Um, nah, I think Stu's still in that second place position. But uh, when you look at this top 20, Johnny, if they show up to your local track, they're on the podium if they're not winning. Well, a, a perfect example. We're in Florida. The number seven, or the 17th place rider right now, Jesse Ensley. Florida boy. Arguably Florida Florida's fastest rider yep. at, at the moment. Um, you know, and sitting within that XC2 class somewhere uh, just inside the top 10, I believe. Um, but, you know, incredibly fast, crazy fast, and 17th overall. So it's, uh, yeah, sitting sixth place in that XC2 yep. class at the moment. Uh, actually showing he only has, nope, yep, he's checked in with five laps complete. Five seconds behind Jonathan Johnson uh, to potentially run top five. You know, you could say, well, he's 17th overall, but that's the fastest guy in the state <laughs> of Florida. It. So this just really shows it's not only the best riders from, you know, and look at the international player. Yep. You've got uh, you've got one, two, three Aussies up there. Uh, you know, you've got riders from all over the country here in the United yep. States. It's the best of the best from everywhere. So you got to be proud of, of you know, you can always want more, but you need to appreciate the work you put in. And adding to that, you got guys like Brock Lover coming in from uh, from Dunlop. Little mistake right there by Stu, but uh, coming in and he sits back and when he's not on the mic, he's not just here for some mic time, some camera time. He's watching and he's learning. He says, "I'm watching and I'm learning. I like watching and learning." And then you have Ducati coming in. Um, these are all good things for off-road racing. Uh, does that mean that Ducati is going to race GNCC right away? Not necessarily, but it is certainly on their minds, in the back of their minds. They've come to several of these events. So all of these things moving our sport forward uh, is, is a good thing. Listen, I don't speak Italian, but I'm pretty sure I heard the one Ducati guy say to the other, we bring Tony Caroli to GNCC. Let's go. That's all I heard. Let's I, I go. Mean, I, well, I heard it too. You yeah. know what? Let's start May, the rumor. Now, maybe he said, do you want a cannoli? But I, That's yeah, also true. I, I, it could have been Tony Caroli to GNCC. I'm into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. The 2-2-2 yeah, two, two, two machine. Bubs, Tasha, move over. <laughs> Tony Caroli. Bubs coming will to fight for that, I guarantee you. Uh, Tony Caroli shows up <laughs> and wants to run that. Bubs needs to just see like, hey, buddy, you can have all it. Yours. We'll share it. Oh, that's good. Waiting at the 11-mile marker. We're waiting for the 969 of Johnny Girard. Uh, clicking off miles, clicking off laps, and, uh, man, pretty close to clicking off another win here. It could be two wins in two races for the factory Red Bull FMF KTM rider, and uh, he's looking really strong today and looking like he's going to be able to put the finishing touches on this one, Mikey. Carry that uh, reverse plate that he says, hey, no pressure. It's a plate. It's a number plate. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I like that attitude. Into, uh, I do, too. I really do. 
I've never understood the whole, you know, jinx. Uh, no. It's only it's only what you make it. That's it. So we'll see him. Uh, we are under four minutes now before we should see the checkered flag. About three and a half minutes away from getting the checkers in this one. There's one of our riders. He had his kick stand out, and he said, you know what, bike, take a nap. Oh, there he is. And there he is on screen, Johnny Girard. I think the goggles are off at this point. And he is uh, rolling. Not quite that sense of urgency we saw in him earlier, but uh, certainly still hitting his marks when and you, keeping her clean. When you know you've got, you know, two minutes plus, um, you just take that little bit of extra time. You come up to a, a spot where it looks like it's a little bottomless. You're, you're not going to charge in there. You're going to wait, you know, take a little bit extra look. You're you're not going to put that extra beating on yourself in the whoops. You're going to kind of just stand up, yeah. you know, take, take, take your time, get to the finish line safely. Don't tear up the equipment. Don't tear up your hands. Don't overexert yourself because you got a race again right. in seven days. Yeah, that's right. Keep I keep forgetting that. We're racing next week. Short, short week. Short time to think about uh, mistakes made today by some of our riders, mechanicals. Uh, you can get right back into work and racing, kind of like my day job in sales. It's all about what have you done for me lately. Uh, that is just the nature of the beast of our sport. So. We're singing Johnny Girard's praises next week. That can change next week. Or yeah. this week, that can change next week. I mean, week. 14 days ago, Craig DeLong was on top of the world. Yep. And you now know. Craig is saying, I got to do some soul yeah. searching. Yeah. It, it changes quickly. And seven days from now, we could see Craig DeLong standing in the center of an uh, of a overall podium, yep. popping a bottle with a big smile on his face saying, hey, baby, I'm back in this thing. <laughs> Let's it. click off some wins. Yeah. it's uh, That's the beauty of it. You, you control your own destiny. You go out there. You do the best you can. You surround yourself with good people. And uh, good things happen. And, you know, for Craig, uh, I got to think some things that, that he'll think about is my championship season. Sure, it started a big buck last year. Every race counts. But that win in Georgia uh, was kind of that one that sort of set Craig of saying, oh, I can be that guy. I can't just be that guy. I am that guy. And he really, really escalated from there. So maybe coming back to a place where he picked up a win last year will put him in the right mindset that he feels he needs to be in. Well, and really all these guys come into the season wanting those wins, feeling like they're a championship contender. And now after two rounds, you have a real-world barometer of where you stand. Uh, yes, obviously there's extenuating circumstances sometimes, but even those, like, you, okay, what do we do to mitigate those moving forward? Yeah. What do we do so that this doesn't happen again so we can keep ourselves in this fight? And the one thing that I do know, if you're healthy, you got a chip in the chair, you got a chance sure. at this championship still. Even a guy who's not scored any points so far in 2024. Yes, you've got a hole to come out of, yep. but it's still possible. There's enough points left on the board, and so whether you're down at the tail end of the top 20 or you're right up in here battling for wins like this guy, Johnny Girard, if you just continue to improve every weekend, you got a, you got a fighting chance. Running through, boy, the tail end of this track, mile marker number uh, 12. I don't know where I was getting seven from. How about mile marker number 12? And under 30 seconds now, maybe a little longer for Johnny Girard. And he should bring it in for a checkered flag. Not not much longer. I'm seeing where that's at on the track. And he's <clears throat> he's just got a couple more turns. If you're just tuning in by chance, we are at three hours and nine minutes, not two and nine. Um, so, yeah, this one ran long. This one ran long today. They, they made that decision at six laps. Not saying they would have changed it, but before the rain. Yeah. And then once the rain started coming, the pace slowed down significantly. We were running 31-minute laps. The last laps were 33 for Johnny and most of the other guys, 34s and 35s. So they slowed down, you know, three to four minutes a lap. Yep. So waiting on the 969 at Johnny Girard. Come through the last few finish line turns to be greeted by the Ricky Towery. And the checkered flag. Starting to see some folks clear out and make their exits. Maybe raced earlier today. They are on their way to Bucky's up in Georgia. <laughs> just assuming. It's just part of the travel. Maybe to the beach. Maybe to Daytona. Come to Daytona. Watch some racing. Hey, that guy wants one more lap. Yep. He, he said, I'm not waiting if, on Johnny If only Girard. he knew. If only he knew. <laughs> I, I could just wait here for just a couple seconds. Yep. Johnny Girard is going to be coming, and the race is over. Mikey, here he is. There he is. Johnny Girard stays perfect in 2024. Slow and methodical right there at the end. A fist in the air. A thank you to Ricky Towery. 
What a sensational start to the season for Johnny Girard, and he's done it both ways. He uh, was flawless in round number one from start to finish. In round number two, Johnny, uh, he had a little get off there at the start. Didn't matter, went right to work, found himself out front. Some good back and forth with Stu Baylor as well, but at the end of the race, when it counts and the checker flies, it's that man right there, Johnny Girard for the win. Yeah, he looks uh, looks pretty excited. Yeah, you know, you can see the, the animated uh, facial expressions and now he's telling all the war stories. You know, he's telling exactly what happened out there. Oh, man, it was you guys can't even imagine how bad it was. Now here the mic. We might be ready. Oh, OK. OK. Now we're uh, we're seeing him kind of download with the crew. He's got his mechanic there, team manager, the wife, everybody. Uh, He's figuring it out right now. He's like, well, we got two wins. He's letting them know how it all went down. Good stuff right there. Johnny going to clean his face off so he can look pretty for the camera. Digging all the sand <laughs> out of the eyes. Yeah, that's, oh, that's extreme. They're, they're taking a look back. Is that Stu coming? No, nope, that's another guy getting stuck in the finish line. Yeah. My wife cringes at this round. She worked for a, uh, Stu just came through the 12-mile mark, by the way. My wife ran a LASIK surgery office. And she thinks we're crazy for racing here in these conditions. I'm like, well, it's just, you know what? That's part of it. Yeah. Sorry about you. That's why you guys have a job. You should, you should be thankful. We're giving you business. Got to keep those goggles on. That's it. Yeah, Johnny's face doesn't look too bad. You know, he, we did see him riding a good bit without goggles at, at different points throughout the race. You know, it, it's just, it's so hard when it's raining that hard, all that coming, hitting you in the lenses. You can pull your tear-offs, you can pull your roll-offs. Eventually, you just run out of film, you run out of new sheets, and you're, you got nothing to do except to take them off and tough it out until you can get a fresh set. But uh, a little bit in the corner of his eyes, but he doesn't seem any too worse for the wear. <laughs> it looks like he's ready to go right now for Georgia. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's out there. He's been tracing. I believe that's Timmy right there. He's been tracing with, telling him about the day. And we're still waiting on Sue, as we heard. He's just coming through that 12-mile mark. We'll get a shot of him coming through in a moment. And kind of expecting Grant Davis to stay in that third place position, Johnny, for the XC2. And Lyndon Snodgrass, we expect to round out the box for the XC1. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, if Grant Davis is able to hold on to that point. Here comes Stu Baylor. Man, he did it the hard way, but a great points day for Stu Baylor. What could have easily gotten away from him. Solid, solid race today in second place, 25 points. 25 points. So back-to-back -back second place finishes for Stu which is pretty darn good. But I know that man wanted back-to-back -back wins. Going to be interesting to hear that interview and get Stu's perspective on this one. Ryan Holiday out here with us this weekend. And I think a frustrated Stu Baylor right now. Body yeah. language kind of speaking a little bit. Both sure, I mean frustrated, today, yeah. but yeah, again, you gotta you gotta look at what could have been uh, and and what actually was. Yeah, I mean sure, he was he was there battling for a win. Uh, Johnny was able to pull a little bit of gap, and then obviously we saw Stu, you know, have to make that wheel change. But that easily could have been, you know, look at his, his brother Grant was sitting there yeah. solidly in a podium position, zero points today. So you know you gotta you gotta take the small wins. I think uh, when he goes back and looks at it, he's going to say, all right, we're going to go to Georgia, get that win. But, yeah, man, we, we, we did well to come out of there with 25 points. It's a good day. Waiting on third, and I think we're going to get our interview. There you go. Grant Davis. There's Grant. XC, XC2 winner and third place in the overall. What That is a pretty elated Grant Davis, and rightfully so. Well, second, second place in the overall at. displaces Stu Baylor, taking the second place overall, meaning he earns 25 points for that overall. But also, man, just getting to stand on the podium with those two guys, what a day for that young man. You know, it, it's not even a few years ago, Grant Davis is the little, the little ripper out there looking up to these guys. And now, Grant Davis, my friend, you are going to be standing on the podium with guys that you've probably been idolizing for the last few years. Two seconds he edged Stu Baylor out by. Man. You know he was pushing the line to try to get yeah. that one done. That is impressive. All right, sounds like uh, Zach Heron is ready and standing by with our winner, Johnny Girard. Hey, guys, that's right. I am down here with two for two, the man himself, Johnny Girard. I just said, you made it hard on yourself, but you got the job done, man. What did it take? Yeah, yeah, I went down second, first corner, and uh, yeah, started back, back of the pack, and uh, kind of just picked my way through those guys, and uh, yeah, got in, uh, got in a battle with Stu, and we were going at it for a while there, and he tucked the front end a couple of times. I found myself in the lead, and I said it's time to go. So, 
Yeah, it was war. Absolutely, man. We know you're a Southwick native. You know how to ride the sand, but it just looked different out here. What about this course? Yeah, this course is brutal. I mean, it, three quarters of it was sand whoops, and then this last part was like survival mode, man. There was holes out there, bikes buried everywhere, so it was definitely a survival kind of day, and the rain came and made it worse, and it was gnarly. There you go, guys. Johnny Gerard, two for two so far here in 2024. Well, big congratulations to Johnny Gerard on the win. I just got a text from Tanner Coombs. He said today's race was longer than last year's longest race, which was at Snowshoe. So what, three hours, 15 minutes in that ballpark? Yeah, it was a little less than that. 310, 310 ballpark somewhere in there. Yeah, 311 was the 311. Oh, there we go, 311.06. Yeah. Mercy. Long day, long day for these guys. Well earned. Uh, waiting for an interview with Stu Baylor, and we'll talk with uh, with Grant Davis as well, the winner of that XC2 and second place overall. I don't know which guy they're going to get first down there, but again, uh, sounds like Jackson Burrell standing by with one of our top three. Yeah, guys, I'm down here with Grant Davis, your second overall here today out of the XC2. Man, take us through this race. Oh, it was a tough one, especially when it started raining. I couldn't see anything. And then I got new goggles, and I was behind Jordan, I think. And as soon as I got my new goggles, he dumped the clutch and covered them and destroyed them. So I rode a whole lap without goggles. And then uh, Caleb was telling me that I was third overall, and then he said five seconds before, right before the finish, and I was just holding it wide open, and I got it, I think. Well, Grant, what a run it was. Tell us how it feels to get up here on the overall podium, man. It has to be a huge confidence boost. Oh, it's insane. And in my first XC2 win and to be on the overall podium, I am i don't even know what to say right now, honestly. I'm so, I don't know. It feels like a dream. Grant, how do you feel going into Georgia next week? Well, really good. I'll have good confidence. I know that. And then hopefully I'll take the points lead from there. All right, guys. That's your second overall today, Grant Davis. Well, congratulations to Grant Davis. Boy, that is that is cool. A second place in the overall, first in the XC2. Uh, I don't know what else to say for him. And that's yeah, that's a, that's a cool moment right there. Yeah. That's a young man that started out in the very, very, you know, smallest of youth ranks, and now he stands on an overall podium with Johnny Gerrard and Stu Baylor. A pretty awesome day for him. Very cool. And we got, I believe, uh, Zach Heron or Jackson Burrell down there with Stu Baylor. Yeah, guys, I'm down here with your third overall, second in class, Stu Baylor. Stu, take us through the sands of Florida. Man, it was, uh, it was a rough day. I, I wish my guys would have let me know that uh, we had somebody sneaking up on the overall. I was, all I was getting was save the bike. I didn't get any fucking pit boards. So, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of tough when uh, when people aren't giving you what you need out there. But um, I knew we were going to have a tough day right there off lap one. And um, just right right off the start, we uh, I, I saw my bike start smoking, and I knew we were losing coolant. So it's all I could do just to try to – try to stay off the clutch, keep the temperatures down. I was literally aiming for water holes and trying to cool that bike off and just, uh, you know, looking looking towards championship, trying to get as much points as we can. But, um, yeah, uh, then we broke a bead midway through the race and just couldn't hold Johnny off anymore. I was making a lot of mistakes. That back, tip, back end was all over the place, and then it got to the point the bike wouldn't move. And had to do that wheel swap, and it was uh, a little longer than it should have been. But, um, you know, for... For all the everything that happened today, I guess I guess it's okay. I'll take it. But uh, pretty bummed, pretty uh, pretty upset with my crew, and pretty upset with uh, with some things that, that happened. And you know we're gonna have to go back and uh, get to the drawing board. It's uh, it's tough because it's not just coming from a rider; it's coming from the boss as well. And you know I've got to I've got to make sure that, that we don't have mistakes like this. You know it's uh, it's just much my, on me as anybody else. And uh, it's just tough when you're racing and you can't really re relay what messages you need. But. We're going to go back to the drawing board. Shout out to Rocky Mountain, Kawasaki, Red Bear Racing, MSR, Dunlop Tires, ASV Levers, uh, Yoshimira, all the guys helping us out. Man, there's so many people, so many good people behind us. Uh, just looking forward to the next one. Stu, nonetheless, you made it to the finish line. How do you feel going into Georgia? Yeah, I feel good. I mean, I wasn't even breathing when I crossed the line. It was it was just a, a salvage point today, and um, we did that. So. Um, you know, I, I, I know my speed's there. We've just uh, fallen short from a couple couple minor setbacks these first two races. And it's time to clean up the messes and make sure that we're, uh, we're able to put this thing in the center moving forward. All right, guys, that's your third overall, Stu Baylor. Well, there you go, Stu Baylor, obviously uh, frustrated with, uh, with the ending of that one. But, you know, 
We were talking about a second place. Grant Davis comes up, plays spoiler. You still got to take it. I yeah. mean, it's no, absolutely. I mean, what could have been for Stu Baylor, you know, could have potentially battled for the win down to the end in that one. Uh, looking like he had second in, in hand, and yep. then Grant Davis able to sneak away just by two seconds there at the finish line. Stu a little frustrated with the uh, communication or lack thereof about that. Uh, he'll go back. He'll work on that with sure. the team. But I, I really, truly believe still, if you're Stu Baylor, yep, work on that. But, man, that could have gone way more sideways. Sure. Come out here with now 21 points. Uh, still, points day. Podiums are our championship rides. You yep. know, you, you have to be on the box. You have to be earning max points, and he did that today. Yeah, absolutely. Big shout-out. Lyndon Snodgrass going to finish fourth OA. And, oh, good. We do have an interview. I was hoping we did with Lyndon Snodgrass, the 178 uh, Babbitt's Online Monster Energy Kawasaki. Stands by with one of our guys. In the pits, Lyndon Snodgrass putting it up on the box here in the XC1 class. First of all, how's it feel, man? Crazy conditions out here in Florida. It feels, uh, it feels awesome. I've been, uh, I've been trying to get another podium here in the, for the last 12 months, basically. And uh, man, I, I just rode a solid race, clicked off the laps, and uh, man, everyone, they, everyone took off so quick at the start, and I was struggling to keep up. I just kept my pace. The track kind of formed up a little better. I was able to ride it. Um, the, I was able to ride the sandwiches a little better, like lap two and three, and I started catching everyone back and. Uh, was able to just keep clicking off passes and uh, a couple of guys dropped out and then uh, we got into third and I just cruised it in last lap and uh, made sure I got it to the finish. There you go, man. We hear this track is just as much a, a mental game. You got to ride smart as much as physical, line choice and everything else. Uh, what, what was going through your head out there? Yeah, definitely. The line selection was crazy today. Uh, I just kind of tried to look up ahead and see where uh, see where people were pointing us and uh, see where everyone else was sort of going and uh, I just kind of picked my way through. But yeah, there was... It was brutal. There's a lot of holes. You got the job done, man. I know you got some great people helping you out. Yeah, that's for sure. Everyone at uh, Team Babbitt's Monster Energy, uh, Kawasaki, um, yeah, my mechanic, Garrett, he's been working super hard. JDP suspension. Uh, we had a rough go at round one, but uh, we got things dialed in now, and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. There you go, guys. Be on the lookout. Linda Snodgrass grabbing third in your XC1 class. Well, big congratulations to Linden. Uh, very, very solid. Uh, his best XC1 finish. Yep, absolutely. Best XC1 finish. And uh, like you mentioned, a, a rough year and a half. Uh, so, man, it's it's really building for him now and looking like he's got some momentum. So he can certainly build off that moving forward. Great day for him. Uh, Johnny, I, I always love to ask you the big takeaway from today. Uh, I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to say Johnny Girard, he's red hot. Who's going to be the guy to step up and challenge him? He didn't have a great start. Still got the job done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the big takeaway from today, uh, Johnny Girard and, and Stu Baylor starting to distance themselves from the rest of the field, not only in the points, but in terms of, you know, really getting themselves to the front of the field and doing all the battling. Uh, Grant Davis, big, big takeaway. Huge, Huge day for him. Uh, first overall podium, first XC1 win. I mean, what a day to get it done. XC2, tough yeah. to, XC2 win. Yep. Uh, and, and what a tough day. And uh, just a young guy, but really Really showing the uh, the poise and the, the composure to get it done in very tough conditions. Yeah, big congratulations to him. And Craig DeLong, he said it himself, I got to go back and do some uh, some soul searching, essentially, and, and get this thing turned around quick. It's still early in the season, but you know how tough those podi podiums are, come, are to come by, let alone the wins. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the uh, the challenge that he has now with the points hole that he's in, uh, he's definitely got to go back and figure something out. But he's a tough guy. Obviously got it done last year, and I don't see any reason to think that he wouldn't figure it out again here very soon. But, man, what a day of racing. It was exciting from start to finish. The conditions were brutal. brutal. But these guys dug deep, got the job done. And uh, Johnny Girard, two wins in a row. Three in his career, two in the last 14 days. Hey, that is a dangerous man. He is all smiles. That is going to wrap things up for us. Don't forget, we got Racer TV tomorrow as well as Tuesday. Ricky Carmichael's Amateur Supercross. We've also got ATV SX coming up. But that's going to wrap it up for GNCC this week. We'll be back next week up in Georgia. On behalf of Jackson Burrell, Zach Heron, Johnny Gallagher, our camera operators, JC, Matt, Josh, Mike, Leah, and Kirsten, our drone pilot, Daniel Rogerson. Awesome having you back this weekend. Our manager, Dan Reinhardt, Spotter Hollywood, our engineer in charge, Jordan McFadden, our director, Don Hampton, doing a stellar job this year. Producer, Adam Gordon, and our executive producer, Miss Carrie Joe Russell. I'm Mikey Waynes. We'll see you at the races.